Good evening, everyone! Welcome to tonight's stream where we're going to be continuing some Banjo Tui! Taking on Grunty Industries level 6. Daniel, welcome! Copy Jr., good to see ya! Christian, hello! Rad Loon, you love this game! That is all, and I mean, you know what? Who doesn't? Banjo Tui's great, and hope you enjoyed the stream. Big Phil, over on the Twitch side, good to see ya! And True Seed, happy Friday, everyone! You're gonna confuse people, they're gonna miss work and school tomorrow. Uh, but uh, you know what? That's how it goes. But yeah, welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, I've been looking forward to this. Grunty Industries is just such a cool level. Always really enjoyed it because who does not love the factory levels in video games? But uh, it's a big one. And honestly, it's been so long since I've played through it. I might get lost a little bit at first, but I think we're gonna have fun. I you know, hope all of you enjoy it as well. Don't be afraid to yell at me throughout the stream if there's like anything silly I'm doing or I'm forgetting something. Oh, well, Fierce Deity Mask over on the Twitch side as well. The video must have gotten too... Th <laughs> uh, did it? <laughs> Tonight my plan is probably just to do Grunty Industries. Uh, again, it's kind of weird splitting up the rest of the Let's Play or the playthroughs. We've got like Grunty Industries still. And then level 7, and then 8, and then like we're gonna have to tack on that ending part somehow. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <gasps> Hope you're having a good night though, Fierce Duty. No way you can miss Banjo Boomer Bear. Yeah, thanks for watching. I think we're gonna have a good stream tonight. And Cappy Jr., hi, hello, hello. But I think with that, let's get started. Great to see all of you, and I hope, hope you have a great night. Uh, once again, yeah, booting it up here. We got 8 out of the 12 achievements. Still 50 of that sweet, sweet gamer score to grab. Can't get over this beta screenshot. Like the like the beta trees from like Project Dream in the background. This one makes a lot more sense. But All right, let's boot it up. Let me know if all the volume sounds good. When did I finally wake up? No, I, I, went, I got like 3 hours of sleep. I, I fell asleep about 8 in the morning and I had to get up at 11, so... We're going on 3 hours here, cut me some slack. No, no, I, I feel great. I think we're gonna have a great night. And yeah, we're definitely gonna have to talk a little bit about the events of last night. Because it, it feels kinda, kinda weird playing another Rareware game tonight. After how horrible Rareware was to me last night. I had a comment just uh, not long before starting the stream saying that like, you know, Snake Rattle and Roll broke me. And I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, I'm certainly disappointed that we didn't beat it last night. Obviously, I always want to try and get a winning run for all of you. So I was a bit sad in that regard, but I don't think that broken is the right terminology. I think we made a lot of progress as someone who had never really tried to beat the game before. Uh, we learned a lot. And it's just a matter of sometimes you gotta know when to call the day, take a bit of a rest, and come back the next time. So we're certainly going to stream it again in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and I think that we'll probably have some more success during that attempt, because I definitely noticed as the, as the night went on, you know, I wasn't pressing the buttons as fast anymore, and that final foot boss, freaking Moonfoot, uh, clearly that requires, <laughs> like, all of your strength. Which, you know, eight hours in at seven in the morning was not really happening. But like I said, you know, again, it, it's not like a, a broken defeat. I didn't like you know throw the game out, swear at it, never say I'm you know say I'm never gonna play it again. Taking like AVGN dump on it or something like that. We'll definitely be back, and I think we're gonna have more success next time. Let's see, going good. Your head got snake rattled and rolled. Uh, uh, did I ever use how long to beat? Oh shoot, I was I was looking at the chat for a second. Um, but yeah, so the next cheat that we got is Fall Proof, which would have been really nice to have in the last part after we had a little bit of an accident in Pterodactyl Land, which by the way, I am so happy we're done that level. It is just such a weird freaking level, which is so much walking around, and it all looks the same. The whole level is just like brown. So, so often, like, you don't know which cave is which. It hardly has any distinguishing features whatsoever. So I'm really happy to be, uh, you know, kind of done with that one. But really looking forward to Grunty Industries here. But we have a few things to do before we make our way to Ye Old Factory. And as you can see, the first of which there is to go deposit those Cheeto pages because we're going to be cheating to start things off. 
But yeah, wow, lots of people tonight. Hope you're all having a great time. Uh, over on the Twitch side, I usually use to gauge how long it would take to beat a game. It says Snake Rattle, Rattle and Roll will take two hours! But you feel that if you're using guides? I feel even with guides, that game is very technical. Like, if you even just watch the last couple of levels and then the final boss, it's like, there is a lot of particular platforming required that you're not going to get in two hours, I don't think. But hey, you know, if you were able to beat Snake Island and Roll in two hours, uh, again, you know, without any, like, rewinds and such, I would love to hear from you and hear about your experience. But otherwise, yeah, we're definitely going to get back to that. And I will be streaming the, the conclusion of that. Hopefully next time we'll get that winning run. And to everyone who joined last night for, like, eight hours, thanks again. Last night was fun, Ma KCC. Well, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was really the kind of people to, to stick around for so long. Again, sorry we couldn't get the winning run. Which I really would have loved to have gotten for you all. Hate having a stream where we don't beat the game, but again, I think you can see the progress that was made. Like, I'm really impressed that you can even see, like, you know, my last run of the night was still good. Like, sometimes if you if you play a game too much, you're kind of getting worn out. You start to kind of not play so well at the end, but still, my last run of the night, even eight hours in, was my best run of the night. So that shows you there was, like, a constant improvement throughout. Which you like to see. It's like not like we were, you know, getting worse as the night went on. So I, I think we have to be right there in terms of a winning run. I think it's just a matter of like we needed a bit of uh, rest before we got back to that. But yeah, no loss from fall energy is now turned on. So we can do a whole bunch of hilarious stunts jumping off rooftops now. And not take a single point of damage, which is pretty funny. April, welcome! Hope you're having a great night. Did I hear about the new Transformers anime movie? No, I did not. Sky's the land of the birds, like Kazooie says Boomer Bear. Right? It's always fun flying around in Banjo-Tooie or Kazooie. Interesting contrast between the background for Banjo-Kazooie, which has the forest, and is more representative of a typical bear environment versus Tooie. Yeah! Yeah, uh, Tooie always kind of felt more of like a, I mean, it, it fits because Tooie's more of an open game. So it would have the, the fly in there, kind of go where you want. Where, uh... Yeah, Banjo Kazooie is always a little more kind of grounded, but so we're gonna just kind of cheat right into level two here. So that's the next place we're headed now that we've entered our cheat code and can go jumping around. We unlocked the spring shoes in the previous part, and there was a jiggy in this level that we could not get until we had used those. And I think we're still missing an empty honeycomb in here, and I have a suspicion that I might have actually missed that. It might not be required. Uh, the, the shoes might not be required, but again, this is another level. Like, oh. So, some levels in Banjo Tooie, it's like, where am I even going here? This is the train station? Okay, so here's the train station. I might have missed something in here. Let's check it out. Like, what have we got going on in ye old train station? Like, we got a whole bunch of junk around here. Like, did we miss something in here? Got this. We got a shovel. We got a box with a rareware symbol on it. Nasty, nasty, nasty little hidden secret there amongst all the other non-breakable boxes. So yeah, that's where that empty honeycomb was. And the other thing, how do we... Outside the crushing shed, there should be spring shoes somewhere around here. And yeah, inside, here's a... Again, you know, another box. All of the, the things we missed in this level had to do with opening up boxes. And by using these shoes... We can now jump behind this waterfall. And does do the Jiggy still make a sound when you get all ten in the level? Like a special fanfare? No, there's no special fanfare when you've collected them all in the level anymore, so... You know, they took away the dance, they took away our fanfare, they took away everything in Banjo-Tooie, but that's another level 100%. That one's 100%. We're missing that one Jiggy in this level from carrying the kid around, which we can now do. Jolly Rogers Lagoon, we gotta stop by to collect a couple. One of them is hatching the egg. What was the other one that I didn't get in Jolly Roger Lagoon yet? Uh, maybe there's a Super Mario Brothers warp zone. Yeah, Fierce Deity Mask. We did find that there are warp zones in Snake, uh, Snake Rattle and Roll, but honestly, it, the early levels aren't bad at all, and they're a good opportunity to build up lives for the later levels, so I don't even really need to skip those. They're not even that long or difficult anyway. Good evening, Doom Mastermind. Hope you're doing well. Uh, unlock Spring Shoes, the kid in the Witchland. You forgot the last one, Daniel. 
Uh, good evening. You got the Globo. I think we got all the Globos in these levels. You're getting it down, Andrew. Listening to the sound of the waterfalls, very relaxing. I love waterfalls. Waterfalls are super cool. So is this like a door? Or just like a black background? Yeah, so it makes you think this is like a room back here. But you can't even do nothing. So yeah, we're done here. And I guess it's time. I'm questioning if I want to hit up Witchy World now. Because we're going to have to go back there anyway. When we get the claw clamber shoes. In an upcoming episode. I didn't mean episode. I mean like, uh, like a few minutes from now. But we can also kind of just dip into Witchy World through here, so we might do that. And that will take us like right to where the kid is too. No way they'd hide a room behind the waterfall, right? Like that's like the fundamental rule of video games is that every waterfall must have a room hidden behind it. And you know, Banjo Kazooie kind of does that in Spiral Mountain. In the original game, they hide like a one up back there. Are there really any other waterfalls in Banjo? But yeah, we could do the spaceship again, which I don't think we'll do. And kind of kind of jump down here and wow who remembers this place where we went like in and out of the tent 400 times should we do one for old time's sake everyone what do you say let's do it what do you think beating i'm guessing a beating that's my guess you win extra eggs and we already had max of those anyway all right up the hill we go and okay, I gotta remember all the controls for like doing things with these dudes. So we're gonna split up. Now, how do I get the old backpack out again? Okay, it's left camera stick, which is awkward. Like they they've remapped some things in in decent ways. Like to put on the uh, the Talon trot now, it's just L and uh, left trigger and right trigger at the same time, which is really nice. But then you know some of the, some of the other things that they couldn't remap so well you still have to use that camera stick to pull off but all right here we go banjo's pretty slow it's kind of like when you're playing as mumbo all right get into the bag let me see here feast fierce duty mask uh nah, there's no way sneak rattle and roll only takes two hours <laughs> it's going to be a beating, you thought. No, not quite. Looks like she was uh, a little more forgiven tonight. I'm trying to read the chat while I'm walking forward. <laughs> I'm just waiting to get hit by something. Funny thing about this was Tootie, who apparently was on went on an adventure of her own this time. Well, that sounds like uh, spin-off material. She's really going to be called Piccolo after the instrument she plays. Well, I mean, that would make total sense, honestly. You know, Tootie is kind of a... It's like a random name because <laughs> they just thought it was funny. We have found over the last bit that Rare has really interesting humor, which like we always kind of knew based on certain things in like Conquer and such. Yeah, I think, yeah, I gotta like actually let him out like legit. There you go. But yeah, everything from like, you know, the feet to the, to the thing that we're going to see upcoming in uh, Grunty Industries. Very interesting stuff. Oh, that's right. So the last Jiggy I can't get in Jolly Roger Lagoon um, still involves something that we don't unlock for like a couple levels still. So you really have to go back to that level like four times. He made me eat this burger. Lots of things happened last week. Yeah, yeah. So last week um, we ended up doing Pterodactyl Land. Um, in addition to Jolly Roger Lagoon, it's really hard to, to gauge, like, you know, should you put one in level per episode or two? The levels are just so massive in this game. But I think we're just doing Grunt the Industries tonight. That in itself is going to definitely take at least a couple hours. But there you go, the last Jiggy of level three. Doesn't mean it's the last we've seen of this place, though. We will actually have to revisit here in the future. But for now, that's all we need. And to get the Jolly Roger Lagoon, is there a connection between Witchy World and Jolly Roger Lagoon? I guess if you... Like, you can't even take the train to Jolly Roger Lagoon. So I guess we're... Oh, I can't leave Kazooie, though. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Guess we gotta go grab that one. Banjo must be strong, right? And like a magic backpack, too, that can just kind of fit anything it wants in there. All right. World entry and exit. 
Peach was after it was named after a fruit called Peach. Yeah, isn't it funny when you think about like the the origins of names, like like Mario named after like a warehouse manager guy. Uh, you know where Nintendo had stuff stored back in their arcade days. Like, can you imagine? Like, what if that guy's name was like, like I don't know. It's, like, it's hard to even imagine that guy. You know, having like a different name. You know, it could have been like Super George or something like that. Like, can you even imagine? Funny things like that. You don't have to go back to Jolly Roger's Lagoon. It will give you a jiggy when you do the thing. No, uh, I, I see what you mean, Christian. Yeah, but we're actually going back because by unlocking Kazooie's ability to hatch eggs, there's still one thing which we didn't get here. And actually, just because I'm freaking picky and I'm not going to be able to sleep at night till we do it, I do want to go and get the one warp pad that I forgot about. No, 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 no. But you tell me where the freaking, uh, where the ship is, because I don't remember. This level was confusing, but we, we managed to deal with it fairly well. Like, I think that's Wumba. It's got some W's in the chat. <laughs> should, we, should we make that a thing? Alright, where is... Um, like, this is... This is the sunken ship? We got a, an achievement for freezing all of these guys. Humble Wumba says Daniel. There we go. Oh, wow, I guessed correct. Would you look at that? Yeah, I didn't even go on top of the ship. Talk about, like, not being thorough. Yeah, this, this rings a lot of bells. That's the thing, too, is this level seems really massive, but it actually wasn't, like, like the, the warp pads aren't even that far apart, really. We managed to get around quite easily. May yeah, last thing we're doing here is we're switching over to Kazooie. And we're gonna go hatch an egg. Wumbo, says Daniel. <laughs> Set it to Wumbo. Alright. Again, I don't understand why, like, you don't have full health when you split up like that. Okay, how do I hatch an egg? Here's a question for you. <laughs> there you go. It was Trigger and X. Must be George from Mother One, says Fierce Deity Man. There you go. You mean he's tipped up? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Wait a minute. So do I have to get Banjo to take him to the, to the water then? Do you really have to, like, tag team this to that degree? I'd forgotten about that part of it. But all right. Making us do just a little more walking because Banjo too, he's not happy until you've taken like 400 steps. You gotta get your 10,000 daily steps in, and Banjo and Kazooie are good at that. What reference is that? Says April. So, uh, the turtle's name is actually like Tip Top. First introduced in Diddy Kong Racing, which we've talked about many times. I, I love Diddy Kong Racing, really, really fun racer on the N64. There was uh, the Donkey Kong Barrel Blast on the Wii, right? And that was originally going to be a bongo game, but then being ported to the Wii, it's kind of used the, the Wii Mote and Nunchuck instead. No? No? What do you want? But but how? Like that, that the, this should work. If I can pick up that kid in Witchy World, I can definitely pick up you. Oh, like, what am I forgetting here? Shoot him with a grenade. <laughs> is, that, is that actually the solution? Here I am trying to do it the logical way, but you're actually just supposed to, to blow him up? Something about that does sound a little bit familiar. Diddy Kong Racing is fun if even some characters turned out to be troublemakers. <laughs> like Conker. Man, I've never played through Conker's Pocket Tales on the Game Boy Color. Like, I can still see the Nintendo Power uh, advertisements for that. Where it's like, you're invited to Conker's birthday. It's going to be lots of cute fun. <laughs> and then, they, then the 64 game comes out and he's just like this 
This crazy guy. Yeah, I guess uh, we're, we're gonna have to get a little violent here. Let's see if this actually works. Like, there's no reason how that makes any sense compared to what I was gonna try. Like, that's just such an unnecessary thing to have to do. Well, he can move just fine on his back. You really get to, you know, view this guy crawling into the water from all angles here. They should make a third Conquer game. They should go back to him having like, uh, <laughs> it's like his birthday party or whatever. The only know Diddy Kong Racing and Mario Kart 64 are both racing games, April. Yeah, N64 had a lot of racing games. You got like the F-Zero. People say that Mickey's Raceway is good. Was that also some involvement from Rare-ish? Or was that like a, like a lie I heard at some point? But I've heard that game's apparently good. You got like the Rush games, Cruisins. I mean, 64-bit, you know, when things finally went 3D, the cat was kind of out of the bag and racing became the big thing. But I think that's everything I want to do before we head to good old Grunty Town. Feel free to remind me if there's anything else. Like, I have seven, just for fun, I have seven honeycombs. I forget if that was how many we needed last time or if that's how many we need this time. It might be eight now, so we might need one more <laughs> before we can get a new segment of HP. But going into the next level, never hurts to have as much health as possible, so let's just double check. Yeah, that's right. What level was it where we can uh, bomb Wumba's house? So, okay, seven. What's your requirement? Oh, we got enough. Good thing we checked. So, the, those things behind her, those are like the extra ones. So, there's only one more to get after this one. Health bar getting nice and long up there. How many segments is that even? One, two, three. What, is that like nine segments? So you max out at ten in this game. What's the max in the first game? Only like eight, right? But then it turns red, so... It's kind of like double, but... But really it's only like eight segments. Very interesting. Sad to see the game winding down, but we have a great level coming up. Exactly, right? So don't worry, there'll still be a little bit of backtracking. You bet that's expensive knowing it's GBC. I don't think that Conker's Pocket Tales has ever been too much for your DD over on Twitch there. We're watching Earthworm Jim last night. It's a fascinating series. I've never beaten any of the games. Maybe we'll have to do like an Earthworm Jim marathon at some point. Where am I going here? Like, I know we need the shoes. I don't remember where you get the shoes. It's like, we're gonna have to bounce up into the hole that this thing made. I know we've been up here last time. What's up here again? Oh, here's the shoes. Okay. For some reason, I thought something else was there. Let's see if we can bounce up here. And to a new area we go. Into the quagmire. And thus, many Family Guy jokes ensued back in the day. Right, let's explore this area a little bit. We got like a bunch of eggs and stuff over here. We got an evil one of these guys. Honestly, like they they came up with some different types of, uh, you know, the beehive to attack you in this game. But nothing is worse than when the bees were surrounding it in the original. And you kind of had to deal with that. Here is our warp thing for this area. And otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much all we, we got going on in here. We got a Jinjo up there, or is it? Let's go up and find out. Ooh, we got jammed under the little bit of a lip there. And we're still jammed under the lip. This is going to be the most difficult part of the of the video. Watch. Oh, finally. And on all this for what I'm pretty sure is a Minjo anyway. <laughs> so, they make you work hard just to find out that it was all a lie. There's also some stuff we can do up there. But I don't think we can go up there just yet. Alright, here we go. Into Grunty Industries. 
You have rather unfortunate story for your first playthrough of Kazooie. Somehow missed an empty honeycomb and spiral mountain, so you started Mumbo's Mountain. Short. Oh no. I've seen people do that before, though. I always wonder if originally in Banjo Kazooie they weren't gonna put those honeycombs in Spiral Mountain because it's so weird that the last six empty honeycombs that you get don't do anything. Almost like maybe they added those extra ones in at some point and you know that kind of changed everything. So yeah, we got Grundy Industries now. It's like a massive building and we need to explore every single floor of this thing and it's gonna be a lot of fun. But all right, first thing we're doing is getting kind of hit with a with a wrench there. I'm trying to remember exactly how we get over there. Like we gotta go up this thing. Can we climb up the side of that maybe? And we're gonna be going across some things, up a wall there. So yeah, before we can get inside, we gotta explore the outside. Yeah, here's this, there's a ladder. And up here we got like a battery. Remember those things? We need them to play your Game Boy before everything was uh, rechargeable. Honestly, it was kind of nice. I mean, you know, it obviously sucks to have to, to buy double A's and things, but there's nothing worse than when you want to play your, your DS or your phone dies or something. And it's just like, oh man, back in the day, you could have just put a new pair of double A's in and been good to go. And now you gotta wait for it to charge for like four hours, find an outlet. Favorite banjo uh, Tui level. This is my favorite Tui level as well. This is gonna be really good. So where do we go now? Gotta drop down the side somewhere. Like right here, and we're gonna hit this button. So for the longest time as a kid, this confused me so much. I could not figure out how to get inside the building. I just I just did not make the connection. I've talked before about how I didn't understand the train really as a kid and even in the last part people were pointing out like why didn't you use the train to travel to ILO Hags and then go back to, to Pterodactyl Land. <laughs> just because the train always slips my mind. But we're gonna go all the way around this building just for fun. We stand on this button and a door opens like way up on like the fourth floor. Maybe even higher than that. With a Jinjo in it but the second we step off that, the door is going to close again, so there's nothing we can do about that right now. We can go over here. And inside this box. But yeah, as a kid, you know, we're not actually supposed to be doing this right now, but as a kid, again, not making the connection between hitting that train switch and what I was supposed to do next, I kind of just, you know, took some damage, came over here and explored a little bit, so we might as well just do a little bit of that first before we go deal the, with the, uh, the real solution. To this puzzle. Hey, we get these guys who you would know if you watched my most recent short. Got all dirty overalls. Place your bets on what the transformation of this level is going to be. Um, it's all fun and games until the DS stops holding a charge. That actually happens. So my original model Game Boy, uh, my original model Nintendo DS. Oh, it sucked. I, I got home one day and I was taking my shoes off and I had my Nintendo DS in one hand and I dropped it. And from that day, it just wouldn't charge anymore. So, I mean, now, you know, you probably take it to someone and they could open it up and something might have come loose. Yeah, you're not a, you're not a real dude. But, uh, but at that point, the, the DS Lite had come out a little bit ago and, you know, it had, uh, it had better battery life and a better screen and such. So I just ended up buying that. But yeah, you know, it sucks when uh, when things like that happen. But that's pretty much it for this level then. Like, we went around the whole building, and all we found was a, a Minjo up here. But there's nothing else we can do to get in at the moment. Because yes, we hit that train switch. And what you actually have to do now is go to a different level, grab that train, and infiltrate Grunty Industries from the inside. Because, you know, Grunty thought she was smart closing all the doors on the outside. But little did she know that the train would lead you right into there. And yeah, that's it. So we came all the way here just to press that button. We did a loop around the building we probably weren't supposed to do. It was kind of reliving my childhood memories doing that. But now we gotta go find the train somewhere. So which train should we take? That's probably the Isle of Hags ones makes the most sense. Uh, still use your 3DS to this day. Properly modded, of course, right? Yeah, hopefully batteries stay good and 
I mean, there'll probably always be like aftermarket batteries, but you always have to worry about those, right? PSPs are the are the worst. So many of the PSP batteries I've seen have like expanded over the years. I don't know what it is about the PSP and and that particular problem. So a lot of people have to grab like aftermarket batteries for that now, and they're of like you know questionable quality to, uh, sometimes. But all right. Got to go down and read that sign and bring the train to where we are, and then we can ride it into Grunty Industry. So yeah, again, just as a kid, I just I just didn't make the connection between opening that train inside the building and then having to, to grab the train and, and get in there. But I won't make that mistake again. You can put lithium packs in PSPs now. First, I've heard of people sending their 3DS's in for repair to Nintendo after modding them. And Nintendo fixed them, but also unmodded them. I mean, I'm shocked Nintendo doesn't just, like, throw it in the trash and say you, you've voided your warranty or something like that. And not fix it if you've modded it. Interesting that they can unmod it, though, just, uh, just that simply. Alright, where are we going? Let's grab the train from this side. Did we manage to beat Snake Rattle and Roll Super Tom, brother? Unfortunately not. We had our best run of the night. Again, I'm impressed that our last run of the night was still our best run. So even eight hours in, you know, I was still improving and you know, getting a little bit better. I think that just with some rest now, we'll get back to it in the near future. I'll definitely be streaming it again. Uh, and I think a winning run will hopefully not be too far off. You know, it's good to kind of take that rest sometimes, clear your mind. You know, let your thumbs <laughs> regenerate a little bit. But yeah, thanks again, Super Tom Brother, for sticking around so long last night. That was a great, uh, great time with everyone. Sony should make new PSP batteries for the retro community, just like how Nintendo should make like 64 controllers again. Like, there's such a market for retro stuff. It'd be so nice if uh, you know companies would throw us a bone every now and then. Now here we are, inside the building! Train brought us right to where we want to be, and yeah, we're in the train station here now. Let's see what we can find in this room. They always like to hide stuff in the train station rooms. There's like, there's some box up here that says Fragilie on it. Clearly there's gonna be something inside. Or, or maybe, or maybe what we're supposed to do here is actually climb this. You can try breaking it after for sure. Like, whenever you see that rareware symbol, usually it means you can break it. But I don't trust this beam that is spanning across the room, naturally. But how do I go? Oh, like, is this, maybe, maybe there's like shoes inside here that will help us get up there? Oh, it's a freaking jump pad. Alright, well, good thing we didn't try uh, that for too long before figuring that out. Nintendo makes N64 controllers, but you need a Nintendo Switch Online sub for it to work. So, a big problem right now is uh, a lot of, you know, old... Of like, you know, original console N64 controllers. The sticks are going bad. They're all kind of getting loose because the literal plastic is grinding down the more that people use them. And speedrunners are kind of in a in a panic right now, figuring out what to do, trying finding replacement sticks or something that they can keep using for their Let's Plays and such. And the new Nintendo Switch Online controllers, I don't think use the same technology in the stick. So it's not like you could just take one of those and put it into your... Uh, you know, your OG 64 controller. It's it's digital rather than analog, I think, is like the way it works. It's some, something particular like that. But yeah, basically, you know, if they would actually make like proper 64 controllers again, that would be great, but clearly they're not interested in that. And here we go, floor one, the main room of Grunty Industries. Get ready to see this place a lot. Where is my warp pad and all that jazz? I think it's over here to the left somewhere. Yeah, lots of things we're gonna have to do in here as time goes on. Here's a big door. It may or may not lead to the outside. There's a box down there we can do. Here's this where uh what's this? What is this? Oh I know what this is. 505 notes needed, 615 obtained. It's the claw clamber boots, the final type of shoes in the game. Now we can kind of just go everywhere we want. Lots of people have been repairing controllers. Yeah, that's something you can do that's totally good. I know there's like replacement sticks and such, but I know they have uh, you know, varying qualities. I know there's the warp pad in this room. Where am I missing it?
Oh, I know where the warp pad is. It's over by the door that I need to go over to. I was just gonna open, uh, open that anyway. <laughs> so here we go. There's another loop around this room. Yeah, it's up there. It's up there. What's in this box again? Oh, wonderful. All right, so let's go up here. And who do we want to do first, Banjo or Kazooie? It's, it always uh, defaults you to Banjo, so I guess we'll just do him. Where we're gonna walk over to this door now and stand on this button, press the B button, and do it the same as Kazooie. And there's that warp pad we were looking for. So with this. We have now opened up the front door of Grenthe Industries and we can now actually get into the building from like kind of the entrance that we saw previously. You don't always have to get in here with the train. But it's just such an interesting way of kind of uh, you know, making you start the level off. When you come in here, you just hit that train switch and then it's right back out. So you know, do all those shenanigans. But yeah, with the clock climber boost, there's all sorts of things we can do now. Going up the side of this building here from the outside, but let's do some more inside stuff. First, I have no route for this. I have no idea where I should go in what order. So just get ready for, for lots of crazy kind of shenanigans in that regard. Let's go do the workers' quarters. Again, something you might have seen if you watched my recent uh, YouTube short. What are we going to find in here? No light coming from under the door. <laughs> Again, though, maybe if we revisit this room later, that will change. What do we got in this room? We got one of these guys who need to have uh, the clothes clean. And also, we get like Banjo Kazooie themed wallpaper. It's all it's all mumble wallpaper, like a picture of Humble Wumble on the wall, <laughs> which is very interesting. I like all the, the Banjo Kazooie and Rare Wear stickers on the fridge. I think we can go in here, right? Oops. These guys are a pain. What you're actually supposed to do to not be noticed by these guys is there should be like a security camera on the wall somewhere. And if we blow that up, it should stop alerting this thing of our presence. And these guys will stop spawning. <laughs> oh, we got two for one. Very nice. Yeah, we can blow up the door on the right. I don't think you can blow up the door on the left. Which is weird because it's like, I don't think it looked that much different. And look who it is, everybody! Lago from the first game. Diego, I see that man is a, that, that, that rabbit's a man of culture. But yeah, Lago relocated to here from Mad Monster Mansion. And someone thought it'd be funny to fill me full of paper. Really need unblocking. Remember, don't flush paper towel. Or this is what you get. But let's see. We're gonna gotta jump in here. You give it some of this. Get that paper right out of there. <laughs> this could be messy. As we talked a lot about in the stream last night, if there's two things that Rareware loved, it's uh, collect-a-thons and toilet humor. Lago, everyone! Yeah, right? How come Kazooie's not still a dragon in Nuts and Bolts? Why the, why'd she change back? This room, is there any significance to like this pattern? This bed's like really bouncy. Don't think it means anything though. And is there like a third door we can go in here? Can we open that door? And uh, so the camera respawned. Again. It's so weird when in the first game, things don't. Hey, look who that is on the wall. Little Jet Force Gemini there. Yeah, so I guess that one doesn't open. We're gonna have to come back in here though, at a later point. All right, where else do we want to go? Train station was that way. We need batteries to go in there. Is there any reason to climb the elevator shaft? Like, obviously, it's a thing that was always fun to do. So, you know what? We're going to do it anyway. We are going to do it. I'm going to climb the elevator shaft just for fun. Especially considering a certain something that we did earlier on in this video. You got to do it. You absolutely have to do it. So, we're going to go in here. And we're gonna climb this. 
I've always loved the music in this level though. Just like the different like, you know, atmospheres and you know, different versions of the song. They're all so great. So on the second floor, we could get some eggs. Can we like actually visit the other floors from the elevator shaft? No, because you have to unlock the doors from the other side. Makes sense. But we can keep climbing up to all you who just want to see just how tall this building is. Hello, Block Frog. Remember climbing all the way to the very top just to jump down? Well, we are going to see about that. Get some eggs back, because why not? And all right, everyone, give it up for floor four coming up. The purple floor. And that's the highest you can go, pretty much. Well, no, actually, that's not true. Should also probably be getting some clockwork kazooie eggs. They're always useful in a pinch. It helps you get some pretty cheap stuff. We have floor four there. But no, there is a there is a fifth floor. But let's see, can we even access that to the elevator shaft? We can go higher. Even higher. And up here, we find a couple of signs. Your reward is reading. Unscrew bolts with the bill drill. Seems simple enough. The twin chimneys both have a prize. And that's why we climbed all the way to the top. Can we see the bottom from here? Not quite. But you know how we could see the bottom. Beautiful. <laughs> Alright, so there wasn't much use to that, but as a kid, you had to always do that. So we did it anyway. Elevator shafts remind you of how... Oh, the, and the Casper. Just, the different colors for each floor actually helped some when you first played the game. Yeah, that's neat that they, they put that kind of detail in there. All right, what should we do next, everybody? So this is so many so many possibilities. Um, let's grab. Like, how do I get those notes over there? Let's grab the clock and boots. And go up this wall. So yeah, that's how these work. Anytime you see those footprints going up the wall, now we can do that. Which is nice and convenient. And there should be even like more places where we can do that too. But let's get rid of those. Turn the camera a bit here. There's some notes down here we gotta grab. Again, you know, the, the, these massive levels and they put these note nests around instead. Of like, separating them individually as they were in the first game. <laughs> how do you file a complaint in the factory, right? Check the fridge, Daniel. Oh, was there something in the fridge in the in the workers' quarters? Oh, it's so nice not taking fall damage. I know the camera's there. I just want to do this quick enough. Nope. Unless you were just re referring to the stickers, we did see those. But that's that. And there's no light coming from under the door. No, there's not. Is that crystal from Star Fox? No, it wasn't. A couple, like a year, a couple years before that, I think. Had some Easter eggs on the fridge. Yeah, those stickers are cool. All sorts of rare stuff represented there. Or what else do we want to do? We can go up this kind of thing here. We can also keep going to the right. Forget what's across this pipe. Weird camera angles in this game sometimes. Oops. Hmm. I got let's can we turn the camera angle this way behind me? There we go. Is this just for a couple eggs? Really? Okay, well, I won't complain. Anything else in this room? I think that's an exit that you come from somewhere else. Uh, yeah, there's something I think we can do over there a little bit later, but all right. Up here we go. It's a big level. There's lots to explore. David Wise and company started working on Dinosaur Planet immediately on the heels of Diddy Kong Racing from what you heard. Oh, that's cool. So I, n I never really thought about it because it's been so long since I played uh, Star Fox Adventures, but David Wise did the music for that game as well. 
Very, very nice. So we got the elevator, the mini elevator that we can't use right now. But coming up here, we got Humba Wumba's Wigwam built out of like metal sheets. I always thought that was rather interesting. Anything in behind? No, but uh, you know what? The Globos are always nearby. So where exactly is it? We can go in here. Oh. I said we can go in here. Again, this is this has become like one of the, the least used attacks in the series. After it already wasn't like really used in the first game. It's like you used even less in this one. <laughs> it's just so weak compared to everything else. When I heard the global, where was it? Oh, behind here, I think. There he is. But I don't think we want to transform just yet. Let's see what we got going on in here. We got more of floor two. Access denied. Door has insufficient power to open. Battery uh, required. So, those batteries that we saw around, we need to pick those up with Banjo's backpack and take them to various locations where they can be used the power things. And uh, yeah, so at some point we're gonna have to get to all that. I guess there was one of those that we could have done back in the main room now that I think about it. All right, we got a Jinjo up there, which I don't think we'll be able to reach. We need a new attack to do that. Yeah, we still got stuff to learn from Jam Jars. Don't worry, we're not out of the woods yet in terms of all the new moves. Getting there, though, we've almost learned everything. Um, Try it with Kazooie, Christian. We still can't backflip with Kaju Kazooie, I don't think, right? I don't think we ever learned how yet. Crystal, where, says Diego? <laughs> the sweating emoji. David Wise and Company started... Um, mm -mm. Speaking of DK Easter eggs, they kept the Donkey Kong Land sound effects in Banjo's Game Boy on the Xbox 360 version. Yeah, I was shocked when we still saw that there was a... Uh, what's it called? A Game Boy. You know, they left that in. Right, we did that. Oh! <laughs> Wait, how do I get out of that? Okay. Oh, he's still around. Interesting. What else can we do down here? Yeah, we're kind of doing things a little bit at a time. Yeah, I would like to go back, actually, and... You know, do the battery thing in the main room, so we might do that in a second. Somewhere, though, we can separate Banjo and Kazooie. We are being chased by, like, that poison gas cloud. Down in here, we got some more notes with a whole bunch of boxes we can open up. Oh, we got the claw clam boots. Okay, okay. Well, we got lots of stuff to do in there. But I think there was something we could climb on the wall over here. So let's try that. As we're being chased by everything. What's up here? Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Hey, we actually got to keep the boots on. Well, oh, because it has to be just Kazooie, I think. So where's the... Where's the separation pad? Oh, was it on top there? Yes, it was. Okay. So let's go back over there then. But I really liked all the new moves that they added into this game. And I always, uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's one of the, like, the rare times when you keep all of your moves from the previous game. And they actually introduced a ton of new stuff, which was really neat. It's always fun unlocking new things like that. But okay, I don't think we can we can make this jump. So let's just go get the boots as the game wants us to. Might as well pick up the notes that are in here as well. Oh, we're stopping by. Oh shoot, though, we don't have much health because we're Kazooie alone. So we should be careful there. I didn't actually didn't mean to like, go down there. And here we go. I'm really excited for Nuts and Bolts. I think it's going to be really fascinating to see just what they did with that. Because again, you know, I've heard all of the jokes about it, but I really don't know much about the content that's in there. Leg Spring. Finally, we can backflip his kazoo. King K. Rule, Grand Tilda the Witch, Captain B. Rarely likes making business leaders as villains. <laughs> Grunt Grunty is a business. I mean, I guess that's true. Grunty Industries, yeah. That is very, very true. Okay, so over here we go. And we can do this. That is not what I want. 
<laughs> we kind of ended up into the goo there. But yeah, see, now we can go get this guy. And what's our current Jinja situation? Four out of eight of the purple guys. Oh, there's the battery over there. Okay, so maybe we'll do that as Banjo now. But in terms of Jinjos, all the white, all the... The, the, the two colors on the left almost look exactly the same. I think, like, one's orange and one's brown. Do they always look that similar on the N64? But all those guys... One more brown <laughs> slash orange one. Three more green to go. And then we got some blue, purple, and the black ones left. Cool, cool. It's really amazing seeing all the content they were able to cram into those N64 cards mod KCC. Looking back on... How little memory space they had. No, yeah, it's just incredible the 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 scope of some of these games for sure. I'm trying to split up again. Maybe we need to like get off of it and then go back on. There you go. Clockwork. Oh, Christian, that's so true. That's so true. Here I am talking about how broken clockwork eggs are. Yeah, we could have just done that. I was trying to to climb onto the thing. You didn't want to. Let's see. We can jump across some platforms here. As banjo. Can I? make it up here? Seems really high. No! This is like a return trip. I guess I need to climb across somehow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we gotta get back up there again. It's never as simple as you wish it was in this game. Whoops. I was looking over at the chat and walked right into that guy. We're being teased with a Cheeto page over there. But yeah, so this is when this move comes into play a lot. We learned it in the last level. But in this level, you really... Oh, gotta beat him up first. There you go. And now with that on our back, we can make the trek to where we need to drop him off. And where exactly was that again? I think we climbed back up in somewhere up there. Remember there was that battery out by the entrance as well. Could have used that to unlock a room near the uh, near the front there. But yeah, we can walk across here to the electromagnet chamber. Put this guy in. Got to do it like this. I mean, I care for the gameplay, but the characters and dialogue in Conker's Bad Fur Day are pretty funny. Agreed. Yeah, I definitely enjoy, like, the banjos and such more. I mean, again, it's just, like, a lot of toilet humor and other stuff in that game, but, like, I can appreciate it for what it is. But yeah, now that the battery's in there, we can explore this room. What have we got going on in Floor 2 Electromagnet Chamber? We have... Danger high voltage. We got a big red button. We're gonna appreciate all that health we have here. I know there's something up here. Yeah, what's directly above us, but we can't do that just yet. But we can hit this button. And I believe this is that elevator shaft. The door opened from this side now, so we can climb up there to get back here in a flash if we want to which is always nice and I think that's it for this room for now so we went through a lot of effort to get in here but there's otherwise not too much we can do at the moment until we do it certain something else so that's that's this whole game banjo Tui is just you got to go here to do this and then here to do this and then back to this room you were in like a few minutes ago to do this other thing but I love it I absolutely love it actually what was over there okay, there's just like eggs on top of it how easy is this to even like look at that like that's just so unnecessary hope you're all having a great night thanks for stopping by as we're working our way slowly but surely through grunty industries here just kind of tackling one thing at a time as we come across it no rhyme or reason the way we're going just kind of doing it as it comes and i think it's been going well so far all right, so again, all these boxes. That's the shoes. That's eggs. Where's the camera in this room that I can even destroy? There's the camera. 
Yeah, they, see, they keep respawning. The eggs are homing, so they're not going where I want them to go. Do you see the way that homed in on that guy? Oh, finally. Wasting all my grenade eggs on it, but... And again, the fact that enemies respawn in this game, too. Makes it tough to, to get ahead sometimes. So we can go down to floor one, which I think we'll do. Is this a blow up a bull door? No. Which means there must be another way to open that. What's back down here? Is this Wumba again? Yes. Okay, so Wumba. And what's down here? This is spooky. Uh, this is... A completely different place off the go. This level gets really massive really fast. And more claw claim roots. Up the side here? Yes. But why? What is this room? Guy who needs to have his clothes clean. We can climb up there. Oh my gosh, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> All the different paths open to us. Daffy Duck! Do you want a new Banjo Kazooie game? You know, ask me that again after we've played Nuts and Bolts. And at some point we'll play the Game Boy Advance one. Plus we're going to be playing the ukulele games. Maybe we'll be satisfied after that. We'll definitely, I'm definitely excited to play uh, ukulele one again. See how that still holds up in my mind. Well, I know I love ukulele two. The impossible layer is so good. Yeah, let's do this room first. Like, where does this go? Floor one. Uh-huh. Okay. What's this button do? It opens up this door. So yeah, we were in the back of the building before, but there was no way to open up that door from the outside. So now, we can get through the back door with no problem. And again, there was that switch outside we needed to stand on with one of the characters. And then we needed uh, Kazooie to run up the side of the building to get that Jinjo. Like, oh, there's just so much option for like what we can do next. And I'm just hoping that I can kind of clear everything one by one and not forget anything. Feel free to remind me if I forget to go back and do something. Am I doing Conquer eventually? I don't have planned on it right now. That would be like a really distant future sort of thing if we did. Alright. Wow, and it's- wait! So is he taking fall damage as Banjo? Or maybe he wasn't taking damage and like those two pieces of health were missing already. Yeah, you figure if we have no fall damage on, that should apply, like, even when you're just playing as one character. Gameplay versus presentation. Which do you guys find more important? Uh, probably the, the gameplay. Like, a game can look really nice, but if it doesn't play well, then I think that's kind of more important. Where's the switch? Oh, he missed. Oh, I was gonna say, he didn't even drop any health, but he did. Where's the button? Here it is. And then with Kazooie, we run back. So this is what I've talked about previously. And people like to talk about Donkey Kong uh, 64 being kind of tedious, where you have to keep going back to the switch barrel. You know, picking up different colored bananas and items and such, but... Banjo-Tooie definitely has a bit of that as well, where you have Banjo-Kazooie combined, you have Banjo alone, Kazooie alone, Mumbo, and then the Wumba transformation. So it's, it's essentially five different ways to experience the level. Just like how there's five different Kongs in Donkey Kong 64, but it's it's a little less tedious than this, maybe, but the levels in this game are also a bit bigger, so it, it adds up a little bit as well. But look at that, walking right up the side of that building. I always thought this was really cool. And that takes us right to this blue guy! Five out of seven! Where do the stairs here go? Oh, we got, uh, are these boots just to take us back down? Like, we don't really need to do that. No, no, I didn't mean to fall off! But, uh, like, again, we don't, uh, lose anything from falling anyway. Where am I here? Uh-oh! Okay, this is not, uh, this is not good. Ugh, big jump! If I can get the Claw Climber boots to here, actually, I know how to do that. Can I get some health from you? No. 
think Conqueror Live and Reloaded is worse. I, so I don't have as much experience with Conqueror as some people. I'm definitely not the one to ask about which version is better. Uh oh. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Cog Timber Boots here. And this should be good for going up the side of that building here. We want to bring Banjo back to the start here anyway. Oh no. Can they run out like while you're on the side of the building? Whoa, did you see that? Just in time to get the big note there for a good 20 of them. Treble clef. Oh, I can go in this window too. What is in here? Huh. So like this is like way up in the main room. That's cool. I forgot all about this. But what does it want from you? Like, can I just go over there and grab that? It seems a, a little suspicious. I don't remember this jiggy at all. I know it's not the boss of the level, but it almost feels like it's getting you ready for like a boss fight. Yeah. So I just have to defeat like five of these guys, or six of them. It's not too difficult. <laughs> Surprisingly simple. And there you go. Jiggy obtained. Pretty sneaky though. A lot of people probably aren't going to notice that window you can go in. In fact, it looks a lot like the windows that you can go in in Rusty Bucket Bay. So it really helps to have played the, uh, the first game to train your eyes to see that sort of thing. But I think that's it for, for this right now. That wasn't intentional, but it worked. Can I go on this pad here? Oh, you can too. And where are we? Okay, so we're over here. Question is, how do I want to get Banjo back to the entrance? <laughs> is there an easy way to do that? How much health does Banjo have? Can we, can we damage boost our way to the front? This, this might be a really bad idea. This is probably like my worst idea yet. I don't know what determines like how long you can keep jumping before uh, it hurts you again, but nice that gives you a little bit of a you know, pause there. I could get some health from that. Where's my platform here? Like. Oh, I forgot! Did you see I just did like a jump? I forgot you could do that. I- Whoa! That's actually really like, abusable. Like, is that intentional? I, I thought that it required some precise timing to do that, but I can just kind of do it whenever I feel like. That feels like it's not something you're supposed to be able to do. <laughs> what?! All right, well, we can just cheat anyway. That's hilarious. What if you could just keep doing it? No, you, can, you can't You can't use the backpack swing again after doing a, a jump. So, oh, you get a double jump as Banjo? That completely slipped my mind. And uh, we are here because, oh, I wanted to get the battery that was outside, right. I could have used Clockwork Eggs to get that Jiggy without starting the fight. Clockwork eggs once again proving just how broken they are, Christian. Thank you. Realistic sense birds will sometimes get up into the rafters of buildings. I've watched a squirrel climb up the side of a concrete condo. Like, it's crazy how animals will, like, find ways up buildings. Like, uh, a, a squirrel is strong enough to claw into concrete. There we go. Uh, let me see here. There's a secret cheat code in the original game that makes all the cursing uncensored. I think you need a clear save file to use it, though. Conquer's such a fascinating game. Oh, looking over at the chat here. I wonder if someone... Mm -hmm. uh... You would have abused eggs, says Daniel. It was so e that that was like the easiest boss fight ever. There wasn't even any reason to to really do anything like that. I mean, it wasn't really a boss fight to begin with, but. but all right, I think we're taking the long way around with Banjo here, 
And that battery thing should be up here. Let's just use our super awesome double jump <laughs> I forgot about. Here we go. You see birds get into Walmart all the time? Yeah, it's so weird when birds get into, into buildings, right? Hope they find a way back out. But okay, let's do this here. And jump over here with this. And there you go, a new area for us to explore unlocked. I almost messed that up. Thankfully we have the backflip now. And onward. And another move. Is this another one for one person though? Yeah, it is too. I think this is a banjo move. So I should have just come in here with Pancho alone at first. Whoops! And I think the pad is the one outside, so we gotta go all the way back and do that. I didn't really remember where the moves were hidden in this level, but we seem to have done a good job of just kind of coming across them. Oh, let's quickly run back around. So what's everyone think of Grunt the Industry so far? Honestly, compared to like the last level, there's just so much to do. Like, I love it. So I feel like it, at least it feels like you're always doing something. Where Pterodactyl Land just feels like there's so much kind of just blank space. But, uh, you know, to anyone who likes Pterodactyl Land, uh, that's cool too. It's funny the fact we're talking about Conker's Bad Fur Day last week, right? Yeah, I feel like a lot of things we talk about kind of have come full circle recently. But here we go, a new move for Banjo, the Snooze Pack. When you're feeling rather low, no place that you can go. The trigger's followed by right stick. Use your pack and have an app to get energy back. So this will help us with that stomping foot. Because what it does is we can now heal anytime we want when we are separated as just Banjo. Uh, and we can so we can get stomped by that foot, heal, get stomped by it again. So does that mean it's impossible to beat this game without uh, taking damage if you have to get stomped by that foot? We press the poison button now. What does the poison button do? It seems to have risen the, the poison water. Why do we want that? I don't know. <laughs> this room, I think we need a, a, need a move that we learn in a later level. Which means more backtracking, hooray! Oh, we got the this pad here. Jolly Roger Lagoon's water pipeline. We have seen in the past a part of Jolly Roger Lagoon. Oh no, I probably can't get up here. It's just Kazooie, can I? Oh, just barely maybe? Hmm. There's gotta be a way to do this. There's gotta. Hmm. Okay. If we climb up the wall, we should be able to do it. You're painting, Block Frog? That's awesome! Hope you're having a great time painting. Okay, get rid of this guy. Alright, jump from here. This should be doable. Very nice. And Banjo, I think, was hiding down here. And there we go. So what else can we do in this room? Or maybe, maybe I should have kept Kazooie separate. Like, because... Why do they give you spring shoes? Is that just like get back up? No, there's a ladder here. Hailfire Peaks oil pipeline. What's the Hailfire Peaks? I've never heard of that level. There's no such thing. I think this is where we came in from. Hmm. From Jolly Roger the Goon that one time, or maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking. No, this is where the Jinjo was that connected the Jolly Roger Lagoon. We had to freeze all those turbines. But yeah, like here. Like, why would you want the shoes? Like, there's a ladder. Where does that even go? Hmm. Is it, even if I got over there as Kazooie, like, you couldn't use the ladder. Is this going to be, like, a really bad idea? Yes. I can see on the other side that there is a, a banjo button. 
I think I am supposed to come back once I learn that other move, but this this room is a uh, little eluding my memory. I don't think I know anything. Like, uh, uh, maybe just for the heck of it, I'm gonna see if we can get over there with, with uh, Kazooie because Kazooie goes really high when you use the spring shoes as just Kazooie. Oh, not the, not the gas. Okay. So it's like, why else would they give you these? Oh, <laughs> not quite. I don't think that's what it wants you to do, but like, it's almost possible, right? Like again, you get the, you get the banjo button over there, but maybe like banjo can, can you climb up the ladder when you're doing that move when we learn it later on? I feel like maybe we're not supposed to be in here quite yet. So we will forget this for now. But interesting. Very interesting. Uh -huh. There's another something else in here I'm missing. But... Uh, not only that, but they're miniature figurines. Or figures. Of characters from your cartoons, Block Frog? That's awesome! Hope you're having a great time painting. I watched part one of the series and found out that you knew the creator. Of, oh, what the fuck? That's that Block Frog. Very cool. Zooey got most of the good moves in Banjo Kazooie, but I feel like they tried to balance it out more in this game and gave Banjo a lot more. Yeah, Banjo gets some cool moves in this game for sure, and I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to be in this room right now. We learned that move, which is like fair enough, but now let's go. Uh, Back to floor two. And do some more stuff up there. But actually, can we go in this thing now? Maybe we can do that. So let me go separate one more time. This level's all about separating using the characters individually, but I think it's fair. It's like, you know, they actually have some creative uses for you to use each of the characters. It's not like just splitting for the heck of it. And, oh, I'm forgetting this room down here. Oh, they kind of hide that down in the corner. I forgot all about that room. We'll look at that in a second. First, we're going in here, though. It's the trash compactor. Intruders in the trash compactor clean up. Droids report to floor one. So trying to walk in here. It's going to crush our face just like that. And leave us with one health remaining. But we can kind of sneak in here. And this is just an exit. If we wanted to get out of here now, thinking that we don't have enough health to survive, we could. But since we learned the ability to sleep anywhere we want, we can get that health back and get crushed all over again. So this is the room where I'm questioning, like, a no damage 100% run in this game might not be possible. There's a delay before it spits you out. There you go. And that opens that. So we will be able to get the jiggy now, but first, might as well pick up a couple of these. And we'll sleep. So again, this is essentially like identical to the big stomping foot. <laughs> and the last thing I want to talk about is big stomping feet. But, um, you know, in uh, the previous level. So we'll go back and check that out later. Love this move, Boomer Bear. Isn't it cool? Of course, there is a cheat that I think we learn next, which kind of uh, breaks that. There you go. Another Jiggy. They've been few and far between in this level, but they're kind of picking up the pace a bit. So yeah, now we can exit through these stairs again. And that brings us up here. I don't think there's really much else to do up here right now. So yeah, we can head back down. And go back up to floor two. I think we're... Uh, actually, no, we're not. <laughs> Are you forgetting about the, uh, the air conditioning thing down there? Doom Mastermind 1985, think my game collection is, expi is in inspiring? Thank you! I've had a lot of people over the years tell me that, you know, I helped inspire them getting the game collecting, and that really, really means a lot. Of course, the landscape has changed just so much now. I feel sorry for people who, like, you know, want to get into it today, and, you know, I've actually been having some good luck at the thrift stores again recently, almost like a kind of thrift store renaissance, so maybe it's time for everyone to get back out and start searching, searching the thrift stores again. You never know what you might find. But, uh, but yeah, the landscape's changed a lot, but, you know, just to be able to, to share some old retro games that some people might not know about, and... 
You know, remind people that the, the classics can be fun as well. I always enjoy that. So thank you. I really appreciate that comment. Where am I going here? What is this? I got a big fan in this room. Almost gives me, uh, you know, Rusty Bucket Bay PTSD. I don't think I, like, I wanted to go check out that other room more. I'm just curious where these lead. In a second, I might hit, like, a point of no return, though. Oh, wait, no, this is just this room. Uh, okay, so we have the, the big fan. We got a whole bunch of, like, nuts and bolts that were beating up on everybody. Take out your frustrations on the nuts and bolts in Grunty Industries. What the heck is this? I think there's, um, a button we hit. I think that big red button from the magnet room turns off this fan. So we can't do that quite yet. So remember, we're going to have to come back here. I like that window, though. That's a cool touch. Nice kind of vantage point. But in this... Oh! In this room here, has to be more we can do. We can pick up some notes for starters. Almost up to 700. Let me see here. Gameplay-wise, Reloaded is better, but if you are in for the jokes, OG is best in regards to Conquer Reloaded. This isn't Minecraft's this big fill in regards to the the brown bricks. Oh no. We're not gonna go, we're not gonna go there again. But okay. Although there are brown brick emojis on uh, on both the uh, YouTube and on the Twitch just for the jokes. Or actually in the Discord as well. Um like I know in this room we gotta be able to open this door somehow, but where does the kind of thing above the door lead? It goes up there. It goes over there, and it just kind of disappears. Maybe we need to come back here a little bit later. We got some notes, though, so we'll consider that a win. Like, if you fall down, how do you even get back up? Okay, there's, like, a thing you can stand on there. But, yeah, I'm not seeing anything else at the moment we can do in this room. So maybe we'll have to come back. Fair enough. I mean, there is, like, a fire symbol on the door. I don't think you just, like, shoot it with fire eggs and it opens, though. We do go down these stairs. I don't think there's anything here. Nope. Did I say nuts and bolts, Block Frog? I did! The enemies in this level inspired a whole Banjo Kazooie video game. Who would have thought? Yeah, Rare actually worked on Connect Sports, right? This is kind of funny. Maybe we'll play that some Thursday? <laughs> I don't know. Alright, now I need to remember which of these rooms we've done. I don't think we went in here. Actually, maybe? Oh, we're back here again. Okay. So we did that. Where else can we go? Up here. Do we do all the exits in this room? I think we did the down to floor one. That never opened. Did we go over here? Again, so many split paths. No, I don't think we really expo explored this room too thoroughly. We got another battery. What do we open up with that battery? That battery we can use. Now, I know we went up here. I don't know if we did everything we could do up here, though. Super Tom Brother, there was smoke drifting up from behind your apartment complex. Turns out there was an accident on the freeway. I hope everyone's okay. Okay, so we got that guy. We can climb up there. Or we could go check out this duct. Lots of different air ducts to go through in this level. Oh, and here's a button we can press. Yeah, for easy access back to here. Lots of doors that you can only open from one side, but once they're open, it's nice. Lots of sort of shortcuts you can unlock in this level. Alright, well, so to the right's that. To the left, what's to the left? Just a bunch of eggs? Oh, but no, as Banjo, that's how you drop down onto a... Over there? Like, no, like, what even? I don't know where it wants us to take that battery. Maybe, we'll, maybe it will become clear after we go up here. And yeah, the thing about the batteries is, like, you put it in your backpack, and then you have to take it to wherever, like, it needs to go. 
uh, you know, instantly. You can't just kind of save them all up for later. Because, yeah, we're on floor three now. First time seeing this place. We got a Globo over there. We could shoot a Clockwork Kazooie egg, or we could just, like, you know, get up there legit. Either works. And we got a whole bunch of boxes to climb on, so don't miss anything sandwiched between all the boxes. Over here, is this where we're going to find Mumbo? It is. And Mumbo probably means that there is a warp pad somewhere, so let's activate that for easy ability to return. Another battery. Batteries everywhere. Remember watching your channel when you found it? You have to say your game room tours were well put with the details and introductions to what you were showing on camera. Thank you! Yeah, it's funny to think that first room tour uh, 12 years ago now. Before, there were like a whole ton of room tours on YouTube, so it became uh, you know, quite well known. Lots of people checked it out back in the day, and I still really appreciate that, and it means a lot to hear people still bring it up now. This is... Aha! Access denied door cannot be... can be accessed by mechanical personnel only. So we're gonna have to go back in there at some point. After we transform. What else can we do up here? Again, you gotta always make sure it's not like a box you can break. Up here. We can do this. And what am I even doing on top of all these boxes? We got, uh... What's that? The, the boiler plants over there. We can climb up there and get some notes, which sounds pretty nice. To the right. Is this like the dead end? We got the service elevator. We got a duct there we can go. And like, there's just so many splitting paths in this level. I love how massive it is. This is a box we can probably break? No, not even. Which is weird, because it like definitely looks like something you should be able to break open. Unless maybe it needs a grenade egg. We've learned, uh, even always try grenade eggs. It's like flip over turtles or anything. But not quite in this situation. Ooh, banana, says Super Tom Brother. Oh, what do we got? In the fire exit. Ooh. Like, there's still a lot to do in that room out there, but I'm curious where this leads. To floor four. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. And where is this now? That's probably going to be like spring shoes to help get back up here. Yeah, we are we are really kind of getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I need to go back to floor three and do a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's the spring shoes. Something is causing like a rumbling. I have no idea what that is. Again, another door we can't use with this guy. Like, is there supposed to be that rumbling happening? I feel like it might be a glitch. So I don't see what would be causing that. It's still happening. Now, this is a really important switch to hit. On the outside of the building, there is now a flight pad giving us easy access to pretty much the entire outside and the roof, where there's going to be a lot of stuff to go up there and grab. So we'll maybe go do that next. But yeah, floor three and uh, floor four here. We still have lots of exploring to do. And it's still doing that rumbling effect. I hope it's not a glitch where it's like, going like, to keep doing that the whole game now. I don't see why it would be doing that. I've also never played Banjo-Kazooie with a rumble pack before. So I've, I'm not used to feeling it rumble while we play. Alright, another warp pad. So we're not going to do floor four quite yet. It's still rumbling. Oh, I finally stopped. I'm not a big fan of rumble in my video games. Um, so it was getting a little annoying. <laughs> but we're good, we're good. Yeah, I'm weird. The first thing I do when I get a new console is go into the options and turn rumble off. <laughs> before I do anything else. Oh boy. So the, uh, in Mario Odyssey, it's actually really mean because there was like a couple of uh, moons that you have to use rumble on and uh, like it will uh, rumble on the floor when you're close to where you have to ground pound. As we all know that Mario Odyssey had a lot of moons which required you to just ground pound to get them. But yeah, there was these like bonus rooms and you had to ground pound whenever it was rumbling a lot. So I'd have to go turn rumble on just for that and go turn it back off. It's the Crusher, says Christian. We got brown bricks from Big Phil. Thank you so much for the for the membership subscriptions there. Happy to see you're enjoying that. Your favorite fruit is the blueberry, says Boomer Bear. Um, let me see. You've heard that Xbox controllers get endless rumbles sometimes on PC games. That's not good. 
But here we go. Okay, so we can fly. And we can open up some more. Like, I, oh, I guess I could have blown it up with grenade eggs instead of using the, the face first approach. Inside here, we got that Cheeto page that was teased to us a little while ago. Anything in like the ceiling? Black ceiling? But yeah, so we gotta fly all around the building, make sure there's no more windows like that we can break into. I don't think we ever read that sign. That might give you a hint about using the train to get inside Grenty Industries, but again, I was a I was a silly kid. I didn't listen to no sign. What else we got around the building? No windows here really that we can open. How about over here? Aha! Okay, so let's use the, the smart approach this time. And what's gonna be inside this one? It was, oh, the crusher is why the screen was shaking. Oh, but like it wasn't even on screen, but maybe it's because, you know, things load so from, like, from so far away on the Xbox 360. It was rumbling like way too early. But again, you know, I would never even notice that because, like again, uh, has it has anyone said before if the OG Banjo-Tooie has rumble pack support? Or is that like an Xbox exclusive thing to have rumble? So there you go, we dropped that platform, so now we can get over to that guy easier. And the, the platform just blows up when we're done with it. But yeah, so you can see why it's so important to be able to kind of explore the building from the outside. Any other windows we gotta bust open? Uh, we already did the one like on the very front. Anything on this side of the building? Here's a nice kind of view of the surrounding area. All right, nothing here. I always like flying around the outside. Thought it was pretty cool. Nothing to find in those trees, though. Anything on this side? I think that's the window we already opened. Fair enough. What's that? It does. It does, Christian. <laughs> okay, so the 64 version does have rumble, and we have Christian to thank for reporting that. I told you, Christian, Rumble is like the last thing on my mind, but I appreciate you filling me in there. Okay, I think we've done everything window-wise, but we got the very top to look at now. We got smokestacks, all sorts of fun stuff. I mean, we gotta watch our health. We may be able to fall from as far as we want, but we still gotta watch out the other kinds of damage. What can we do up here? We can get that jiggy, is what we can do. Can I get up there, or do I have to shoot like a clockwork kazooie egg? I mean, we could just do that. We we're probably supposed to, like, use this door. This isn't even a door. This is like a window. So maybe that was the intended solution. But either way, it worked. What else can we do with this guy? But yeah, Clockwork Kazooie eggs are awesome. Oh, let's... Those are eggs. Yeah, I think that's really why we wanted to come in here. Perfect. Don't think there's too much else. Oh! Almost missed this. Is this going to be the one in the magnet room? No, this is even a different one on floor four. <laughs> we haven't explored floor four too much. I think floor one is like the one floor we're kind of kind of done with. Aside from like that basement area. Again, just so much to do in Grunty Industry. Hope you're all having fun though. Why don't I like Rumble? And this is going to be a hot take. Oh, feel absolutely free to, to have a different opinion. I just don't feel that my hands rumbling adds much to the game. Uh, like, I mean, I guess, like, you, like, you know, you can imagine it as, like, when you get hit by it in the game or something, like, your hands start rumbling? I don't know. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. But to anyone who does enjoy Rumble, more power to ya. Hope you enjoy it. It's just never been my thing. I know him for like, uh, you know, back in the day there was like those vests you could buy that like would rumble all over. But even then, it's like, I don't know. I'm not too interested in that sort of thing. So I think the point is that you use like Kazooie alone to bounce up that. And then you can do some like maneuvers where you can probably fly over there. But we broke it with the clockwork Kazooie eggs. There you go. You love rumble, Christian? I mean, that's great. You know, anyone who enjoys it, I think that's cool. But see, like in that room, for example, like my my hands are just rumbling because there's like the crusher going off. <laughs> it didn't add anything to the game. It just kind of kind of frustrating. All right. A 
another window we can go into. Everything needs it, Christians! Super Nintendo game with Rumble? What Super Nintendo games do you think would be better with Rumble? Is that a real guy or a fake guy? It is indeed a real guy. Let's go grab him. Oh, four to four! It's the Brown Ginger family's now complete! Ma KCC also loves Rumble! Especially the Dreamcast. And you could add these third-party jumper packs that would add, like, an extreme rumble. Dreamcast controller really cool. You got, like, the, uh, the, um, the VMU in there. And then you could, uh, you know, there's, like, two spots. And you could put the rumble in the other. And that's great, though, you know. I'm happy to hear that there's people out there who enjoy the rumble features. I mean, obviously people do. They wouldn't keep including it. Where am I going here? We, uh, we're in danger. I feel like there's not much health in this level. There aren't many health pickups. I could climb across that. For what reason? Like, is it, did I miss anything? Or is that just, um, like another way to get back up if you want? But I don't think there's anything over there. Or maybe that's where I get out. No, this is where I get out. Either way, there's that. Okay, and then there's that window. And I think that's everything in regards to these. We still have to fly though, we're not quite done yet. Can I defeat you and get some of my HP back? There we go. Unlike in the first game, enemy kills are not guaranteed HP in this one. But alright, we got a couple smokestacks now. And let's see what we can do with those. We got kind of like a weird panel on the side of this one. With a secret in there. Is this gonna- this, this has to be a real guy for how much uh, work they made us do to get to him. Alright, six out of seven of the blue ones. Am I stuck in here now, though? I guess we are. Well, I wasn't done on the roof, but the game has kind of forced us into the boiler room. I do see something of interest, though. We do have a panel over there, which we can unscrew. And that will help us with some other parts of the level. I think this is the panel that might, uh, lead to the magnet room? I'd love to see their original design plans for Grunty Industries and if, uh, you know, if it, how, just how well thought out it all is. There's that electromagnetic chamber, though. I just missed the warp on the roof, says Chris. We'll be back up there. Can we go here? So we need a battery for that door. I think there's a mini game in there that we have to play, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, this guy. Uh, where else can we go? So that that blue ginger up there, you can probably have used a uh, a clockwork zooey egg to get that, but you know, going through the chimneys, interesting too. All right, we got this. Look how fast it goes now. <laughs> if you get that wrong, though, you're really not going to have much health. But yeah, we'll, be, we'll be, uh, be back to the roof soon enough. So we need to find a battery somewhere. What floor were we on? Was this three or four? It always looked like you should be able to like go inside these with a clockwork kazooie. Can you? No, you cannot. And just to confirm, we can't do the other one either. I got like a better camera. Like, you should be able to go on that, right? No? And there you go. Wow, look at them all just ready to beat me up the second I, uh, the <laughs> second I came out of that. What about fire eggs? Can we shoot, like, fire eggs in there to shoot the, to start that back up? Nah, fire eggs! Oh! It's doing that glitch, everybody! I told you there was a glitch! Where you get infinite fire eggs for some reason! So it wasn't just on the 64 version, and it wasn't just my imagination. So if anyone wants to explain to me why this happens, 
Like, again, I've experienced it on the 64, and so for some reason it's happening now again on the Xbox 360. Only fire eggs. I've never understood why. But, uh, but there you go. I wonder if it has something to do with turning on the cheat for falling. Because that seems to be when it started, right? Maybe there's a glitch where, like, they accidentally made that turn infinite fire eggs on as well. Hello, Joseph, over on the Twitch side. Dragon Kazooie. Yeah, Dragon Kazooie's really cool. Actually, let's go over here and open up this elevator shaft thing. I hope you're having a great night. Thanks, everyone who's watching. It's all glitches all the time, says Boomer Bear. I'm not the only person who's, like, had that happen, though, right? Other people can, can confirm that, too. <laughs> Snake Rattle and Roll needs Rumble, please no. That would just make it really annoying. Where do you respawn when you die? It's been a while since you died so you don't remember. Usually it's the beginning of the level uh, is where you respawn. In Banjo-Tooie, I believe. And then the warp pads make it usually easy enough to kind of get back where you need to go. No, we only have one death so far after a silly mistake that I made in the previous level where I should have used some eggs to defeat the, the flying guys before walking across a very narrow pathway, thought I could defeat them along the way, did not end up going according to Keikaku. And here we are now with uh, with one death. We'll see if we can keep it at that. Does Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts have deaths? Is it possible to do like a no death run of that game? Like, can you even die or is it just like all vehicle racing? Again, I'm just so excited to learn more about Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Is it such an easy game to make fun of, but... You know, I, think, I feel like most people just make jokes about how it's different and not as many jokes about the gameplay itself. But who knows, maybe the gameplay is is really bad. Like, I guess we'll find out, basically. But yeah, I missed the warp pad on the roof. Like a big dork. Like, how? <laughs> Why didn't it activate that? I don't know. But we got it now. There should be, like, one more thing we gotta do in the other smokestack, I think. Actually, I think we need to go on top of the smokestack still. We got an empty honeycomb on this one. Nothing on that one. It is so fun just being able to jump wherever you want. <laughs> like, what a great cheat to unlock before this level. And if you collect all the Cheeto pages, like, it's time so that you will have it for this level, which is kind of neat. Is there anywhere we can go in the side of this smokestack, or is that it for the roof? Might be it. Alright, we can use that hole in the smokestack to instantly go back to where we were. Working our way through floor three now. Killer Instinct on SNES needs rumble. Oh, cause oh, Kazooie being a dragon is why the I get it. I get it. Thank you so much, Joseph. I mean, and, and, uh, and Christian on the YouTube side as well. Thank you both. I never realized that connection. That's such a weird freaking connection. But that's actually good then. So anytime I just kind of need to waste some eggs, we can use fire eggs then. So that's that's just a feature I never realized about Dragon Kazooie. And it's actually pretty fascinating. It makes uh, Dragon Kazooie all that worth it. Because I never really use like this the, the basic fire attack. But infinite fire eggs, okay, that's that's a really interesting perk I was not aware of. Where else do I want to go? So this is floor three here. I need a battery from somewhere. Where do I get a battery? We're also up here now. We have a rareware box over there. Can I break it with fire eggs, which we haven't been of? Yes, I can. Ooh, look at that. What's that? It's gonna be like a jump pad? Yes. Okay, I like the looks of what's to the left, so let's do that. We got some notes over here as well. We're gonna have to check the uh, the stat screen in a second to see just how well we're doing progress-wise. For a second, I thought maybe it was gonna be like a Kazooie only requirement, but looks like we're pretty good. And only one more uh, health container to unlock, so. I think we're probably going to need all the rest of the empty honeycombs for that. But here we go. Got some notes. That's a big jump. And that's not a real guy, so why would I even go over there? Like, we already got the white one. <laughs> Unless there's something else over there I'm not seeing. 
That seems that's just a kind of a nasty trick. Put all this effort into jumping over there and it just ends up being for nothing. Actually, maybe the reason we go over there is because then we jump to these boxes? Maybe. Actually, no, we can just like go across there, right? I'm overthinking it, like usual. Let's try oh, there's something else on this side. To the right here. Mm, okay, I did that already. Yes, we already went outside the building through that. So, okay. Whoa, he came back? Forget that. Big old pants. You think the dragon Kazooie was just a... Um, no, I didn't think he was just a cosmetic change. I knew about, like, this, for example. Um, but the fire eggs I was not aware of. I always thought it was a glitch, but okay, now it makes sense. Here we go. Learning new things, which is great. I mean, I love still learning new things. Well, I'm playing a game. So there's still the Globo over there, which we're gonna go grab. Because we got Mumbo's hut right over there. I usually save the, like, you know, the Mumbo and the Wumba stuff for last, but there's a, there's a lot of stuff we gotta do with them in this level. Like, a lot of stuff. And what do you think first? Mumbo and then Wumbo. It's probably, like, the correct order. Now, I don't need it. Oh, we lost a piece. <laughs> Close enough. But yeah, the big old pants and the, the Grunty Industries logo up there. Interesting stuff written on the boxes. But alright, where do I want to go now? Are we pretty much done with floor three? Not really. I need batteries. Where are all the batteries at? We knew there, were, there was one on floor two. Hmm. Question is, how do I get it to like where we need it? There's like the roof. I'm not sure how we want to how we want to tackle this. I don't think we've been in here though, so let's do this. <laughs> Is it an underwear factory? Is that like confirmed the only thing they make? I mean I never really thought about exactly what it was that Grunty Industries produced, but that's kind of funny now that you mention it. Like okay, we have a battery here. Um, if I warped up to floor four, do we have all the warp pads now? Yes. Where can I use this? I think after Mumbo does this, I think we need a battery on the other side there, maybe? Which is what that one could be good for? Got eggs there. Um, come down here. That's what activated the flight pad. Come up around here. Need the washing machine to do that. Those are jumping boots. And yet my, my controller's rumbling again. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to remember in my head all like there's the there's the boiler room and we needed the battery to get in there. Boiler room is on floor three. Let's go back to floor three. This, I need to remember how to even get to the boiler room. So from floor three, outside Mumbo's skull, if I grab the battery beside Mumbo's skull here, how do I get back to the boiler room? Because the boiler room is like up on a ledge, right? Like, I can go through here, which would take me over here. Then I can climb this pole. Jump off here. And this is all his banjo without Kazooie because that's you can't get Kazooie back while you have the battery in your backpack. And then Banjo can go around here. Actually, no, Banjo can just climb up that pole probably without doing all this. So he can go across here, over here. And can we can get over to the I I think I think that battery can be used to open up the uh the boiler. Like that's so convoluted. But I think it's gonna work. The, oh, that's so true. I never made that connection. I never made that connection. I mean, here's the junk box. Because, yeah, you never really see much of, like, the production area in Grunty Industries, now that you think about it. It's a lot of, like, boxes and stuff, but you never really see anything getting done. <laughs> like, just magnets and all sorts of other, other crazy junk. But okay. So now for the long trek with Banjo here. I'm gonna beat up this 
guy. Put him in the bag. And here we go. A long, slow walk around this whole floor. Washing machine banjo says, eat my shorts, says Super Tom Brother. There's the old rubbish box. So Grunty Industries, right? Like she lives in Grunty's lair in Spiral Mountain in the original game. Like how does Grunty Industries factor into all this? Like do her sisters run the factory and she owns it or? Like I want to hear more about uh, all this lore. I think we were supposed to climb across with that, uh, with that beam, but we've learned about our cheating jumping powers. Like are you supposed to be able to do that? <laughs> like there's no way, right? And now we can go over here, somehow get past all of these guys, even though we walk super slow. And there you go, another battery put back into its place. I think there's just like one more battery we need. Definitely one of the, the slower parts of the level. Energizer battery, right? If you're trying to go in as just Banjo, can you? Oh, I thought I was going to complain. Because I know we have to do a mini game here. The mini game is not happening with just Banjo. No, don't let me. I don't want to play this just Banjo. I was kidding. I was kidding. I didn't think it would actually let me come in here as just Banjo. So it's another mini game where you, you pick up the colors and you dump them off into the loading bays that correspond to that color and uh... you gotta get enough points by it before time runs out but oh my gosh like you want to have Kazumi and get the shoes you do not want to be playing this as just Banjo but that makes me wonder like I guess you can score uh... like you could play as just Kazooie and really rack up points but this is this is awful can I like leave the room halfway through the game? oh you can too! interesting so let's try it as just Kazooie that would be fun how do I get there? It's just Kazooie. Uh... Actually, that's a really good question. Oh, I guess we can backflip now, so we should be okay. Something like that. Alright, alright, we got this. Can Banjo bear it? Right? Yeah, like, uh, I mean, maybe we should have tried as just Banjo. But, yeah, that, that's... I didn't even... I didn't think it would let you do it as just, like, one of the characters, so I'm surprised. Super Tom Brothers, Canada have the Energizer Bunny or the Duracell Bunny. Here, the bunny mascot is for either company, depending on the region. So for for me, it's the it's the Energizer Bunny. I never really thought about it being different in, in different places. Are they like just like another one of those things that's the same company, but they have like you know different brands under their name? But okay, as Kazooie, he should be able to run like even faster. I think maybe too fast even. So you pick up these guys, but it doesn't count as points right off the bat. I'm also used to this having a fixed camera angle in the multiplayer mode, which I've played a lot with friends, but I'm not used to this, uh, you know, looking like this. Um, but okay, so, you know, even uh, as we pick up more and we slow down as Kazooie, we're actually still really fast <laughs> compared to, uh, you know, the base speed. So we're just going to pick up as many of these guys as we can, and we're going to dump them all right at the end and rack up, like, mega score. Okay, maybe we'll dump some now. 18, 18, 11! Give me more of that. I think we only needed 40, right? But is there a, a bonus prize for getting more? Is there a Cheeto page in part of this as well? No! I didn't get to dump my, uh, all the blue ones off. A bonus will now be awarded. I don't think there's a Cheeto page anyway. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about that. Hey, Kazooie, play the kazoo. I don't think we want to play again. The, the bulbs must be LEDs. Were LEDs even the thing back then? But yeah, you can't do anything with any of these. Alright, another Jiggy down. And where does that leave us progress-wise? Sounds like a good time to check in. 
Four to ten. Three to three. Two to three. One hundred. So yeah, all we're missing is one Cheeto page. All the notes too. Wow. And a whole ton of jiggies. Which will start to fall into place once we start uh, doing the transformations and such. So I know where one more battery is. Does anyone remember where there's one more door we have to open? Or is that the door to, um... You know, a certain something later on. Have I been in here? What is that room? There's a guy in there we gotta clean up. I think I think we can like only access that with the, the washing machine, so. Hmm. It might be time to do some mumbo stuff. It might be. You heard blue LEDs were hard to make back then. Which is funny because you see some people with Christmas lights and it's like all blue. Like for some reason they sell like a pure blue string of Christmas lights. It's like it's not even a Christmas color blue. <laughs> Why are they selling all blue lights? But uh, I mean it's funny that I've heard that too about blue light being really hard to make and yet it seems like there's more blue LEDs around than anything. Maybe they were just like really impressed that they could do it so they like overproduced them. Probably the old environmentally unfriendly kind. But see, the the old un, uh, environmentally unfriendly bulbs, they, they, they shine a bit brighter, I find, at Christmas. They look a little bit nicer on the house than uh, the LEDs, which are... They don't, they, they're kind of dull. I think it's worth killing the environment a little bit for a month a year <laughs> to get some good Christmas lights. Maybe. But what else are we doing here? Uh, nothing behind. Good old Mumbo's here. Is Banjo waiting on the pad over here? No. Oh, where did I leave Banjo? Did I leave him outside of the freaking minigame? I did too. Whoops. Alright, uh... But yeah, where should we go next is the question. Oh, Banjo, you can do it. You can do it. I should not have made this mistake. But I did. The old lights have their charm, right, Boomer Bear? Agreed. Okay, so let's go back down to floor two for a minute. Because usually they don't place the batteries you know, too far away from where you need them. So I'm just trying to remember, like, where else on this floor could I possibly use a battery? Anything here? Okay, we got this room here. We've been in there now. Second floor. What's this? This take this... Oh, back here again, okay. I have like a lifetime supply of incandescent bulbs stored because they banned those too. They're like, no, you must only have you know LEDs forever. So I just I stocked up on the incandescent kind because <laughs> I like no they again they they don't don't they don't shine exactly the same as LEDs do. Plus I have a, a socket in my house that uh, doesn't really work with LEDs. They like flicker and it doesn't look right. And that's for my for my game room actually. All I do is turn on like a single like 60 watt bulb. Uh, incandescent bulb. And that's the light that I have in the game room while I'm playing my game since it doesn't have to have, you know, all the fluorescent lights don't need to be on while I'm doing that. So I have like a lifetime supply of those stocked up for when they burn out because they have burned out multiple times throughout my my NES adventure. But yeah, if, if only the government knew how many plastic straws and incandescent bulbs and plastic bags I had stored <laughs> for any situation. I'd be like uh, public enemy number one in Canada where that's like uh, the, the biggest wrong thing you can do. I digress. So, again, what else is there to even do in this? Like, there's that battery, but I forget what it wants. So maybe it's- it might be mumbo time. It might be mumbo time. And if I remember at some point what we need a battery for, then so it shall be. Let's do mum uh, mumbo. So let's find the work pad. 
which should be where? Like down here? The blinding lights that people sometimes use in public bathrooms? That's a thing? I haven't really thought about that. Anything behind this chair here? Nope. No, LEDs have their place for sure. But it's 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 like the the not giving you an option part of it, right? Like it's not like okay, you know, try to transition over to the LEDs, but there's still some incandescent ones if you need them. It's like no, just an outright ban on incandescent. So if there is a situation where like you need them, or it's not so easy to retrofit something to be compatible with LEDs, well you're just toast, right? It's the you know, use this or else attitude that is worse than anything. Or obviously, you know, if there's situations where LEDs work, then, you know, people are, people are going to use them. But like, there's situations where other things work, too. Um, okay, so as Mumbo, let's just start from the bottom. Is there anything on floor one we need Mumbo for? I don't think so, but floor two, I think, had a few places where we need him. Now is when I get lost a little bit though, so bear with me while I try to remember all the different mumbo pads we've seen throughout this level. So like, there's that thing. Okay, we can't do anything down here as mumbo. We've cleared that out of the way. And there is this here. I think this has a mumbo use? Um... I think that this connects to the magnet room if we go down here, right? Can he, can Mumbo even climb up uh, poles? I don't know if there's even a way to get down there without taking damage as Mumbo. We've seen many uh, occasions uh, in this game where Mumbo just kind of has to take a hit. No, really? That just leads me back here? We did a complete loop for no good reason? Wait, no, this is Wumba's area. Okay, so yeah, that's the pad. We established that we can't go down there. Fair enough. Where else can we go? Not there. Can we go down here and do something? That's this room again. I don't think there's anything we can do as Mumbo in here either. We had green light bulbs for a while and they don't light as well as the standard with ones. Right? Yeah, there's, you know, there's different kinds of things. Different things are good in different situations. All right, we got this room. Oh, this is still just the kind of the same room up here. So is there nothing to do with Mumbo on floor two? I thought the magnet room was on floor two, but I have, oh, I know where the magnet room is. I know. It's that room we opened up with the battery. Okay, okay. So I need to get back there somehow. You know, they don't even give you a map of this place to, to help you out. <laughs> it's, it's all memorization. Yeah, so we come back here. I got to go in here. Okay, there we go. There we go. So now that we're in the magnet room, how do I get up to where the mumbo pad is? And that's a mumbo pad that we had to make fall down from the ceiling by unbolting it from above. Whew. Is this a timed thing, though? Auto-fixing program initiated. Magnet will be reactivated in 90 seconds. Well, I haven't even unlocked the, um... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So we have to go transform into the washing machine really quick for this. I forgot that this was a timed event. And it's bad because we haven't even actually, like, unlocked the time machine. Or, not the time machine. Um, you know, the washing machine yet. It was mentioned that this might be the level where there's a quick transport between Mumbo's house and Wumba's hut. I know there's a level that's like that. For some reason, I always thought it was Hailfire Peaks. But I could be wrong about that. I think it makes sense if the, you know, because of that, there was an easy way to transfer in this one. But hopefully we still have time doing it this way. 
90 seconds seems to be a lot. It's, a, it's hilarious that they made a washing machine, which was a, it was a joke in the Kazooie, into a legitimate one in this game. Also really funny uh, that, you know, Humble Wumba is, a, is a, an answer to the question in Grant, Grunty's Furnace Fun about what the name of, like, the guy is who will transform you into different things. Obviously the answer is Mumba, Mumbo Jumbo. But it's funny that, you know, Humble Wumba was an answer there. And then that became her name in this game. So there's a few kind of foreshadow-ish things, which may have been coincidence, may have been pre-planned, uh, that you can encounter in the first game. But all right, all right. So now that the magnet's broken, we can stand on this big square button with the washing machine. Otherwise, it would have pulled us away, not allowed us to get close. And that opens up this door. <laughs> okay. What a crazy ride it's been. It is Hailfire Peaks, says Christian. Nice. Okay, so the, the counter's still going. Oh, so, uh, yeah, that's the washing machine. We can shoot underwear. But otherwise, there's kind of a, a big cube, and we can't jump very high. Oh, the time eventually went away. I guess it just stays broken now. That's what you get. Um, and is this also a room where there's one of those elevators we can use as the washing machine? Maybe not. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of doors and even service elevators in this level that we can only use when we're transformed as the washing machine. But before we do that... We're gonna go transform back now into Mumbo, into Banjo and Kazooie. Go down into the basement, do that door that we just opened, and then we'll go back and do a whole bunch of stuff we still have to do as Mumbo, and then it'll be washing machine time again. Lots of fun. So let's go back to floor one. And that just unlocked a door, which we can get to by going down here. And over here. Again, though, it's, it's funny. I never thought about how there aren't really any, like, production areas in Grunty Industries. It's all just, like, storage and air conditioning and stuff. All right, what's going on in this room? We got a Cheeto page over there. Like, this slows down a little bit, I guess, but I don't trust that. Can we shoot a clockwork egg far enough? Maybe not. Or well, maybe it stops at some point. <laughs> and this is just going to be a big waste of eggs. Yeah, it's not going to work. Can I go across? I can't position the camera directly behind me. Oh, yes I can, okay. No, 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 I didn't mean to come out of the thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, again, that might stop after we do this. But all right, everyone, it's boss time. What on earth is that? Looks like an enormous toilet cleaner. Hello, Wayoshi. You can get across the gap with pure gaming. I was working on it. There shouldn't be much trouble then. It's a visually impaired welding torch. Workers' guidelines that bears are not to be let into the building. That's a huge vacuum. So the story between this boss is apparently, like, the designer didn't like it, so they crumpled it up and threw it in the trash, and, like, someone pulled it out of the trash and said, No, that's great, you should do it. And thus, Welder was born. <laughs> well, all right, it's boss time, everyone. And to be completely honest, I forget exactly what it wants you to do as part of this one. I don't think we can just hit it, like, just yet. But like most bosses, it shoots a bunch of stuff at you, and you gotta avoid it. And now he's doing his Luigi's Mansion technique. I mean, we're probably supposed to like shoot into the thing. No! I, I, did, I thought I had grenade eggs, I forgot I had switched to clockwork. That actually worked, that's funny. 
full of flammable gas. Okay, so let's actually switch that then. Are these guys going to come to life? Yes. Will they drop health? Hopefully. Also, yes. No, 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 no. Oh, I think they got me. I always forget which button it is to shoot an egg behind you. I think it's... It's B. Okay, obviously shooting eggs backwards doesn't work. <laughs> I'll be more prepared next time. So he just seems to kind of be repeating this phase until we until we get it right, which is easier said than done. Clearly. So I should just prepare now, knowing what he's going to do. Do a thing like that. <laughs> Infinity fire eggs don't fail me now. Seems to be another case though, where they're giving you grenade eggs. I think grenade eggs are required. It seems to be a boss thing where they always make you use grenades. Hey, what's he doing back there? I can't even see behind me. Just kind of hopping along. I have PTSD from last night in regards to enemies hopping, hopping around and crushing me. No! I accidentally turned. Anytime you want to stop doing that would be great. Okay. And he's just going to do the same thing again, it looks like. He looks like a snake. Oh, <laughs> it does too. Oh no, all my worst nightmares coming back. Oh, snake rattle and roll. And now I'm just kind of prepare. They ripped off Sneak... It's funny how many things in Snake, Rattle, and Roll we can kind of compare to, to other stuff that Rare did. But there you go. Alright, now it gets a little tricky as the floor is going to be electrified. Nothing too dangerous, though. I think his shots are also getting a little more accurate. Oh no, okay. Well, now this is tricky. That wasn't accurate enough? <laughs> he got me. Yeah, it's tough. The, the, the worst part is trying to shoot the eggs while he is uh, trying to consume you. Hammer angles are also kind of bad. The, I think I got it? Okay. Oh, time to fight these guys again. So it's basically the same three stages that we fought the first time. But now, with the electrified floor. And this phase is nothing to, to worry about. And that should be it. There you go. He token you. That's kind of what it looked like. You didn't want to tease me, Demo. Yeah, I addressed your nasty, nasty comment. Uh, I kid. Uh, where you're like, the game broke me. I don't think that in one night, being able to consistently get to the final boss is defined in such a way. And I've actually impressed that even though you know, we played for so long. My, my last run was actually still our best one of the night. Uh, and you know, I had a lot of fun with the game. It wasn't like I rage quit or anything like that. Sometimes you just gotta take a break and come back the next day. So I think you'll see another snake rattle and roll stream really soon. I'm excited to get back to that one with a, with a fresh mind. <laughs> and fresh thumbs too. Grown! I appear to be quite badly injured. Now where's our prize? <laughs> There you go, our whole prize is a jump pad just to get back out of the room. So yeah, I think we can now get that, uh... The Mumbo page, uh, not the Mumbo page, the Cheeto page. And the Jiggy that was behind the fan. 
I'm allowing him to keep my pick. So does he just kind of stay here? We can keep talking to him? I'm only messing around, but you had to go too far. Keep saying different things. I don't know, rather a lot of... That's not good. I suppose you can recommend a decent repairman. Okay, he seems to be looping around again. Okay. Can we, like, finish him off? Guess that's all we get. What about health-wise? Ooh, that's good. Alright, so that's, uh, that's the boss of Grunty Industries. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting boss. Big Phil, you versus the Oxetine welding and cutting torch system she told you not to worry about. Yeah, Boomer Bear, that war, hey, yeah, exactly, right? Like, where did that come from back then? You were kidding then too, said Demo. No, I'm, I'm playing around as well, don't worry. But okay, now we can do this. We almost did it the first time, but I accidentally tur uh, you know, turned on the flutter mode. Where am I? Okay. How many Cheeto pages is that? I think that was the last Cheeto page of the level, right? So just like uh, five more jiggies to get and we're done. Yeah, Grunty Industry is pretty massive, but overall, if you don't let it overwhelm you, it's not too bad of a level. And uh, one of the jiggies we might not even be able to get today. I do think we need to come back once we get another move. And yeah, in through here. And there we go. On top of the fan. A weird camera angle up here. Can I just fall down? <laughs> Again, we don't take fall damage, so why not, right? Nothing else in this room, I don't think. But there is another door here to the waste disposal plant. Oh! I think I know what door this is. Yes! Yes? Question mark? No. Oh, see, I still think we need that move I was talking about with Banjo. Yeah! We've seen this one from the other side. So there might be two Jiggies even in this level that we can't get yet. I wonder if there's a way to glitch this. Can you shoot a Clockwork Kazooie Egg down there? That would be really funny if it like activated... No, I didn't mean to accidentally jump it. If it activated just long enough to grab it. Not even close. One more. I'll waste one more. We really need to get more of these guys. Ah, uh, I guess guess they've planned around that one. <laughs> Mind you, there's a ton of backtracking in this basement unless you glitch. The room is empty without the fan going. It looks like your biggest fan, Big Phil. Uh, the Wahey is a, a British game, uh, British show reference. Yeah, there's been a few of those in the Banjo Kazooie series for sure. Which one do you like better, Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Tooie? I'm really having a lot of fun playing Banjo Tooie. Uh, there's its moments where there's like a lot of walking around, back and forth, backtracking and such. But I, th I think it's uh, it's really well made. Banjo Kazooie I like a lot as well, though. I think the more compact levels, uh, you know, they're they're like nonstop excitement, which is really nice. Speaking of which, it's falling off ledges because that's what we do. So I think I think they're both different, and they both have pros and cons for sure. But they're both great games, and I'm certainly not in any position to be like, oh, you know, this one's great, this one's not. They're both a lot of fun. Sorry, right, back to floor one here. Let's re-examine our stats. All right, so I think there's two jiggies we can't get till we learn a move in a future level, which means three more. One, so we still need Mumbo for a couple. And the washing machine. So let's go get Mumbo back and do what we were doing before and unlock some more stuff. Ah, uh, where's the pad? Over here. <laughs> Points to the. Exactly, right? That is a big fan. Mm, Mumbo. So Mumbo, we need to take to the fourth floor, so that's the next thing we'll do. Other places where we needed Mumbo? I'm sure there was more. I'm trying to remember. 
But yeah, I think that last battery, I think it's after we do Mumbo this time, there'll be another door that needs another battery. And that's probably what it will go to. But yeah, floor four. What we got here? One second. <laughs> Fish Didi is shocked to see that it's a, that's a washing machine transformation, right? Isn't that funny? Again, after it was joked about in the uh, in the original game. Where is uh, the thing? Up here. And there we go. Well, finally, it will stop that rumbling. <laughs> 50 feet is like 300 hockey pucks or something, Big Phil. Yeah, Canada's weird, where we do like uh, weight. You know, like a person's weight, we still use pounds. And for height, we still use like feet and inches. So, but, but for most other things, it's all metric now. But yeah, because we're so close to the US, we got like this weird hybrid thing going on sometimes. Which like, whatever. Wait, what am I supposed to do in 45 seconds? Oh, you gotta... Huh. You got a whole bunch of health. Where does this take you? So I need to do that as so so that's another case of having to do that with Mumbo, and having to go back and get the other guys. Like that's so weird that every t every case of Mumbo in this level requires you to then go transform back and do something with other characters. It's just a uh, you know it just makes things more convoluted than they have to be. Super Tom brother, I know Banjo Kazooie better, but I'm sure I'd like this game just as much. And you've played it enough, right? The Crusher has been reactivated. All right, so one more time, we gotta watch this cutscene. But for everything that matters, it's metric to see. So it feels like a GameCube game, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's, it's just it's so crazy imagining what a a Banjo Kazooie game could have looked like on the GameCube for sure. All right. Oh, so it showed? No, it didn't show the button on the other side. You just, you just have to know somehow. So once again, warp pad over here. Where am I? It's so dark. The timer still counts, even when you're in like the menu there. But this should be easy enough. Run back up the hill. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is remember where all those guys are who needed their clothes washed. I think there's like five or six of them. No, not the roof, not the roof. No, it's floor four. And it's an easy enough run through here. And I think standing on that button should shut it off once and for all, hopefully. Wall crusher has now been switched off. Perfect. This block's having uh, three health. Actually, I think there might have been a honeycomb guy in there. That's why it does that. And we can go down here. Oh, wrong eggs equipped. Where's the camera that's even alerting them of me? Oh, there he is. But yeah, here's a new room that we haven't been in before, and what are we gonna find inside this one? We got a pole there that we can climb up. I think, again, this is gonna be something we need to use the battery for. That was way back on floor two. Assuming I can take the battery through the warp pad. Should I forget if they allow you to do that? I don't think there's a reason why they wouldn't. Oh, here's the fourth floor. So I could actually use that as, as well to climb up here if I wanted to. Claw clamber boots. There's a door over there. Clock climber boots to go up there. Oh wow, so there's a lot more over here than I remember. Oh, something in that up there as well, it looked like. What does this lead to? Oh, there's where we need the battery. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's all coming together though. I feel like we're, we're, we're almost there. What do we got? Two feels like, yeah, two feels a GameCube game. Uh, Fiend Pounds is traditional measure forcing Canada. 
Oh, is it true, true scene? Big Phil's house is 2,200 square cheeseburgers. Sounds good to me. Okay, okay. So, uh, go over here. So now we know where we need to go with the battery, which is very good. Let's just finish can, uh, exploring up here. And I saw something going on in there. Oh, that's where the camera is again. Yeah, those annoying cameras. There's a lot of rareware games that have an alarm system. Like, uh, you know, GoldenEye and all that. I wonder if Banjo-Tooie will ever end up on Nintendo Switch Online. Funny to think that, you know, GoldenEye and Gunstar Heroes and stuff got on there first. But okay, that's that. So, go to Rareware's official channel, and you can find some development uh, discussion videos for Banjo-Tooie. It's actually, uh, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, they talked about Project Dream. Uh, this got recommended to me recently, I guess, because I've been streaming it. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see. But here we go, the la final time of using Gun Kazooie here. We got clinkers have invaded the sewer system and are blocking the vents. Like, I don't see why it's my problem to, to fix Grunty's factory, but here we go. So we got uh, to clear up all these vents. We got 20 clogged vents. They can be like anywhere. Is there a certain kind of egg that I have to use for this? Can I use fire eggs in this level? Okay, we can use fire eggs. And like, how, how do you aim again? Okay, R. Again, this is much more smooth with the N64 controller, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best. But yeah, knowing that I have infinite fire eggs, that is great. And I don't remember the exact layout of this place. And this is, again, though, another uh, area that becomes like a multiplayer map when you're playing with friends, so that's really cool. But yeah, 200 seconds to find them all. Might take a try or two. I wish I wasn't so zoomed in. I feel like I, don't, I can't see too much. This room feels right out of Goldeneye, the uh, the Citadel level. I'm pretty sure this is a carbon copy of a room in the Citadel multiplayer map of Goldeneye. In fact, a lot of this feels like it's just the, the Citadel map from Goldeneye. <laughs> they might have got lazy and just copy and pasted it. Right, we got 12. We're about half of our time gone. About half of the dudes still to find. And we've already done this room. Oh, maybe not. But yeah, once again, you got like rare with the poo jokes. You got to poo clogging up the vent for some reason. Anything else in here? Alright, we're down to eight. We got like ten seconds each left. Seems like a little close, but we're gonna try. Oh, we got like a couple in here. Four left. I hear poo sounds. Like, does that mean that there's like one nearby? Aha, it does too. Listen for those farts. Now I feel like I'm toast though. I don't know where I have or haven't been. Yeah, we can fit in there. Been in here. I think we've been up here. Yeah, I was on a roll, but. Oh! Eventually we ran out of luck, I guess. Close. Really close. But we're gonna get toxic gassed, everyone! So, there you go. Just a couple short. Those drones making loud beeping sounds are hilarious. <laughs> I know what that reminds you of, Fierce Duty. 
Yes, team mask. Uh, oh no! Oh, we still have time until our health runs out completely. I, I wasn't ex actually no. It's the. So does this count as a death then? I guess it counts as a death. Well, second death of the let's play then. Like, I guess I could have run for the exit, but there's no consequence to dying in Banjo Tooie aside from the, you know, hurting your ego or whatever. Uh, yeah, so it's twin stick, so I'm using the right to change the camera, and I'm moving with the left stick. But yeah, that's not how it works in the 64 one. It's a little bit different there. So we got that. It's okay. I'm not sure which ones I missed last time, which is the problem. Like, I, I don't know the layout too well, so it's kind of just, you know, running around and guessing until, until it all falls into place. Anything down here? There's one here. We got our full health back, though, which is nice. Did we ever go into this room? Spooky blue room is kind of cool. Yeah, we did go in here. Oh. There we go. Alright. So far, so good. I already did that one. I probably shouldn't have fallen. So I'm going back where we've been before. But there was a split path here, right? Like, maybe I want to try some of these rooms? Yeah, like up here. This is like the most first-person shooter I've played in a long time. I won't be getting any 360 no-scopes or whatever they're called. Um, I think we did this already. Yeah, we did these. The blue room? There we go. I hear the farting! There it is. Did we go up here last time? We might not have... Oh yeah, we did go in here. Five to go. I think that's it for this area. Oh, there's one there. But we got that one, which is interesting. did this room. I hear the farting though. Why? Where could he be? Oops. Okay. I feel like I'm so low to the floor. I feel like I'm playing Goldeneye when like you crouch and you run around <laughs> to avoid getting hit. Now nah, we've done all this before. We did this. Yeah, it always comes down to the last few, right? Like I just... It's a very complicated layout. It's like, where have you been? Where have you not been? It's not, uh, it's not linear in the slightest. We actually did worse this time than the last time. Like, I hear the farting here. But I have no idea where it is. I don't even know where the entrance is. The entrance was around here somewhere, wasn't it? Like, yeah, entrance, I think. If I wasn't caught in the corner. So you can't escape, so you don't have to die. Might as well say this is Goldeneye we're playing, right? Do you see these stages? Yeah, Twin Stick, anyone else play? What are you doing? <laughs> Just shooting the crap, right? Alright, well since we got infinite eggs, I guess we'll try it again. Do I ever look out this door? Maybe... That's part of my problem? That. Like, there's a whole three of them in this room, which is nice to start off. Okay, we need we need a system, but the problem is it's like it's just so winding and twisting. It's hard to say. All right, we'll do it in this order. Yeah, I think I missed this one last time. Okay, so we're we're doing okay so far.
Trying to be a little smarter with my pathing this time. Remembering where I am relative to other things. That one's easy to miss. Like if I go back here. Oh. So we did that. Um, yeah, so last time I went right. Okay, so now I can go left. Into this room. We did most of those. Did we do what's in here? Yeah, we did that. So let's continue this way. Around here. I don't think we've been in this room, right? Yep, so that's seven. It's easy to miss that one. Six. Again, is there like a secret in the wall here, like in the Citadel? Doesn't seem to be. What's down here? Five. With 100 seconds to go. Let's see, we've done this now. Okay, so back up here. And to the left now. Anything up here? Yes, four. All right, I think all of them are probably on the upper levels now. This is leading us back down, though. Oh, maybe not. What is this area, even? Okay, we've done that. Okay. Have we done this? I don't think we've done this. No? Okay, nothing up here. Interesting. Oh, oh! Yeah, there is something up here. Two. And I think we go back up here? And then over here, we haven't been. Hmm, but we've already done this room. What does this mean? Where am I missing two more? Listen for the sounds. Oh, one. Oh, I, oh, there's one more. There's one more here. Yes, yes. Okay. When you think about it, it's gotta gotta imagine the map in your head. <laughs> no graph paper required. Whew. What will it take to conquer this challenge, Boomer Bear? We got it, we got it. Good, good map though. Like for the last kind of first person shooting section. It's a good one, I like that one. More than the freaking dynamite sticks in the second level. There's a big gap in between shooting though. I mean, I guess in the, in the fifth stage, there was like a mini game that involved shooting. Here's the real question though. How the heck do we get out of here now? Like around here. And thank goodness again for infinite fire eggs. Really helped us out. Um, through here. And then here. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, I, I can't believe that we actually did that. And there you go. I think that's it. Might as well use this opportunity to grab a couple of these. So what else do we have left? Next up, we're going to be using the battery to open that door. And then once we do whatever is in there, we'll go back and wash all of those guys' clothes, assuming I can remember where they all are. And I think we're just about wrapping up this level. Again, Grunty Industries is a lot of fun. Lots of variety, lots of things to do. And what else could you ask for, right? I should have looked a little more time, though. I feel like there's like something at the top. But then we're not missing really anything else, so... Like at the very top. Now, that's not a crack in the wall, I don't think. No. Alright, where's the nearest warp pad? I guess that one back where the conveyor belt was. Way to go, Boomer Bear. Thank you. Appreciate that. How's my health situation doing? Oh, we, we really need that. Okay. So let's split up. Where can we do that? Up here, right? So yeah, two deaths now, unfortunately. We had an unfortunate death in that minigame. Is when you run out of time in the minigame in the second level. It doesn't actually count as a death, but in this case, it very clearly was 
like a you're dead sort of situation. Gonna head off to sleep now, Boomer Bear. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're only doing Grunt the Industries today. I see we're almost approaching three hours just from this one level. Uh, and we still have a bit of uh, cleanup stuff we're gonna do now that we have the claw clamber boots as well. But really appreciate that, Boomer Bear. Thank you so much. And have a great night. Or we might do the cleanup next time. Because we might only do Hailfire Peaks next time as well. Depending, like, we'll see. So, you know, adding the, the cleanup to that might make a bit more sense. But now where is the room I'm thinking of now with the battery in it? I forget. That goes back down to floor one. Is it this room? So there's a guy we need to clean with the washing machine. Don't forget about that. But yeah, the battery is over here. Depends on how long everything takes, right? But I think it's pretty clear at this point that, you know, it's, it's you can't really do more than, than one level per episode. Or else it really will end up being like six hours. And since we streamed, you know, how long we did last night, we might even stream again tomorrow. You never know. Um, you know, we don't want to overdo it too much. Okay, now that we got this guy, can we use the warp pad and get back to floor four, is the question. Just waiting for jam jars to yell at me, but, oh, it does let us do it. We could also have used, um, you know, thinking about it. We could have climbed up the elevator shaft as well. Gotten back to where we needed to go that way. They both work, I guess. That's a lot of climbing we'd have to do, though, up to floor four. So this might actually be a bit faster. Uh, Canada has different time zones, but uh, I am in the eastern time zone. We span, like, five or six time zones in Canada. I think we have the most time zones of, like, any country in the world. Or does Russia have more? I always forget. Well, I think we're, we're the second largest country next to next to Russia. So it's probably pretty similar. But okay. And yeah, we want to go somewhere up there, I think? No, or was it in here? Oh, it is in here. Okay. Now, what is this? The cable room. I don't remember anything about the cable room. heck is this? Hey, I can't even see. I, I, I have hardly any memory of this room. I see a switch over there I can press. The quality control room. Interesting. This is a fan button? Extractor fan not required. What does that even mean? Now obviously, yeah, it pops back up. Whoa. Whoa, okay, we got toxic waste, everyone. We need a lot of toxic waste to create all those pairs of underwear, I guess. So it looks like this is probably a thing we want to bring Kazooie for. So I guess we'll head back. But that fan button, like, what is up with that? <laughs> Do I remember the cable guy? Like, the... Is that the Jim Carrey movie? Hmm. But like if I don't if I if I just do banjo there, how do I ever get Kazooie to this location? Oh I see. No, Kazooie probably could have done it on her own. In fact, it probably would have been faster to do it on her own. Oh well. We'll walk back and get her. Ooh, exclamation mark. Huh? Well, pretend that didn't just happen. There we go. <laughs> Dr. Robotnik, Bowser, and Inspector Gadget in the same movie, Super Tombo. That's funny. That's funny. 
Oh, I could have used that pad to get up there as Kazooie. Okay, that makes more sense. But all right, okay, so what's with this cable room and this fan button? I don't remember this. I don't remember this room, but I'm, I'm curious. It's also a little bit scary here. Like again, like if I touch this, extractor fan. Ooh. There's like a, there's a floor four door over there. Down here there's a Jinjo, but we know it's not a real one. We got eggs down here that we can collect. But overall, I'm not sure what the purpose of this room is. Like, I'm guessing we should shoot some of this stuff. Oh, there's a rareware one. Okay. Okay. Well, we shot a rareware barrel, whatever that means. I, I, I assume, like, you don't want to shoot the, the industrial ones. I'm getting a good sound effect whenever I shoot the, the blue ones, though. So I guess I'm just going to keep doing it? It's going faster! It started going faster, everyone! No! No! Okay, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. I wasn't accounting for the, for the faster speed. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Look at that! Look at that health going down! <laughs> wow! Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, the real Jinjos... Um... The, the eggs just go right through them. That's how you know that they're the real ones. Yeah, it'd be pretty awful if, like, you could kill them and then, like, never collect them. That reminds me of, uh, like, the hostages in Mega Man X5 and 6. Where if they die, it's like, that's it. Or maybe only in Mega Man 6 they can die. Mega Man X6. But that was always a pain. Because there was always a few that, like, were almost guaranteed to get caught. Oh, okay, so it starts us at the part where we left off. So what, what, what this is telling me is like we should stand near the door, but that means that the egg's gonna take longer to get to the, the barrel as well. Look at that! Look at that! That was good. Okay, so that was good for a Jiggy. Where did it go? Did it go to the other side? Huh. Maybe we have to get over there then with the uh, with the washing machine, or can we like cheese it with a uh, with an egg? Like, where am I? Yeah, we're up to sixty jiggies here. Yeah, so you can go in here. Access denied. Like, there is a pad over here that looks like we can jump up with Kazooie. Oh, maybe if we had brought, like, just Kazooie alone, you can probably backflip high enough to get over that wall. But we cheesed it anyway, so no reason to do any of that. Are we going to be playing Donkey Kong 64 Ma KCC? After everything that's already on our list, it's totally possible we'll get to Donkey Kong 64 at some point. View totals. I hope it goes to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, it'd be really cool to play it on that. Alright, so we know about two of the Jiggies that deal with toxic waste. And I think we're missing the technique that we need to, uh, to deal with those at this time. So the last thing to do then is get our washing machine and wash some clothes, everybody. Who thought you'd be doing chores today, but it's true. I'm not sure why that spring is there. Don't think you can get there as BK without a glitch. Interesting, right? I'm thinking that maybe because uh, Kazooie backflips so high you can pull it off. Or like, you know, just in case you do glitch over there, it's, a, it's like a fail-safe sort of thing. But interesting, right? But yeah, we're up to two deaths now, so I don't feel so bad about the one 
in uh, the prehistoric level in Pterodactyl right now. Because <laughs> at least it didn't end up being like the only one. And where's that warp pad at? I think the washing machine is indestructible, or maybe that's not true. It would make sense if it was. But let's go back to Wumba. Alright, so everyone, time to put your big brain on. Where have we seen all of these guys who need their clothes washed? And here we go! Also, I know there's one level where there's something in the rafters. It might be the next level. Okay, so here we go. I know one of the guys... Do I have health as the washing machine? Oh, you do still have health. Where's that, like, door? Not in this room. Don't forget, we can shoot underwear, should we desire to. Yeah, in here is one of them. And he should tell us how many other dudes we have to find. How do you talk as a washing machine? <laughs> Did we ever climb up that pole right there? I forget if we did ever end up doing that one. It's been so long. We've been wandering around this factory for so long now. There you go. That's better. Try and find my five. Five more. Okay, so six total. Are there any other ones on floor two, though? Like, I feel like floor two was mainly that guy. Let's go back down to floor one. There's definitely a couple down there. So let's go back to that warp pad. Oh, no! Forgot all about that. That makes things a little more complicated. But there are service elevators around somewhere that only the washing machine can use. Where are they, though? That's the question. But we can actually go back down the floor one with this. So let's do that. Oh, this takes us outside, which is actually exactly where I wanted to go. Anyway. I think the washing machine can go through the gunk without getting hurt. We might quickly find out that I'm wrong about that. Nope, that's true. And we can clean up this guy. Does that? We love Beta 64! Petrobite gaming. I new stuff in games is fascinating, right? One of the first things I do after beating an NES game is immediately go check out its article. On the cutting room floor, you get to see things like how the regions are different, what might have been changed from the Japanese version to the North American version, or like what might have been left out during development. Stuff like that really is cool to, to see. All right, that's one more guy down. This is good too. Yeah, I forgot how to even get to that door. So the fact that we accidentally stumbled onto it was kind of lucky. But where is the service elevator for this floor? That's something I'm kind of scared because I don't remember exactly where that is. No, not in this room. Actually, it might have been Wumba's room, like right next to that. So let's go back there. If I go back to where Wumba is, and go right. Is it in this room? Oh, I thought maybe... Actually, what's up this ramp? Ah, there it is. Okay, floor one, please. Yeah, so floor one has a couple. Uh, and then, I know there's one on floor five. Like, I think uh, there's probably two on this floor, and then maybe just like one on each of the other floors we haven't gone to yet. And then uh, next we're gonna go down into the, the cruise quarters down there. We got three more dudes to find. If we can make, make it there. So yeah, up here and around. And then we're gonna have that light coming from under the door. 
So in that short, it said it was like a 1 in 1,000 chance. I'm, I feel like I'm sure I've seen that light coming from under the door before. And didn't really understand what it meant. Like, maybe I did get a message coming from the other side, but I doubt I stood around all day to, to really hear all the details of his tale, of his story. Two more. So I, I don't even think we've been to, like, floors three or four yet, right? So that's probably where they are. Like, I know there's one, like, way at the top. Alright, elevator, please. Alright, so two we did. Let's go right up to five. Because I know there's one up there. And that just leaves one remaining. <laughs> you can already hear him complaining. Where is he, though? How does a washing machine running into that hurt? Like, where... Where am I going here? How high can I jump? Like, I can't jump up to any of these. Alright, I need to destroy you. Like, the washing machine is such a pushover. That's what I'm looking for. This door here. Everything is out to get you. Right, Super Tom Brother? Yeah, there's some, uh, there's definitely some references to other rare games in that, uh, in the cruise quarters down there. <laughs> Alright, everyone, where's the last guy? I don't even, again, we haven't even really looked at floors 3 or 4 yet. We've gotta be there somewhere. Alright, take a quick, so, so floor 4 is where the conveyor belt is. Let's do floor 3 first. So yeah, we're over here. Uh, there's a door on this wall, or somewhere I think there's a door here that we can use only as the washing machine, right? Or maybe not. Uh -oh. I thought there was. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, there is around here Some. Oh, there's the door. We got one health left. Like, the shooting underwear with the, um, with the washing machine is so weak. There he is. Oh, no! The washing machine was so massive, I couldn't even see that guy. Crap. <laughs> like, the washing machine covered the whole screen. I didn't even see that enemy. Well, add it to the list. Whoops, says Yoshi. F says Daniel. You brought that banjo turns into a washing machine. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that can randomly happen in the first game, too. I forget if it happened to us once or if it never did occur during our playthrough of BK1. But you see what happened to me, right? Like, I you can't even see the enemy because I'm taking up the whole screen right here. And yeah, of course I ran right into him. Another one of Rareware's cheap tricks from the NES days, I see. Have I played Battletoads Arcade? Uh, no, I have not played the arcade version. Another death, says Christian. Just like I said last night with Battletoads. You know, once, once one happens, it's like they just don't stop. But I think that's everything we can do. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. See, so yeah, all I had to do was grab that health, and we could have avoided that death, but... He was hidden! He was hidden behind the washing machine! It wasn't my fault! Oh, boy. I mean, I think that's all we can do at this point until we unlock a new move in a future... future level. You saw the battery outside, Daniel? I believe we did that one. It is all we can do, Yoshi. Thank you for the confirmation there. So last thing I think we're gonna do, before we wrap up tonight, we will do it, um, here, is... Oh my gosh. Do I have a lot more health as the washing machine, though? Like, how many segments is that? One, two, three, four, five, six... Yeah, I think it actually gave us an extra segment. Because we're transformed into the washing machine, and I still found a way to die. Like, you are just a big freaking tank, and everything hits you. And you are so weak. 
Future Rage Battle Toads or Double Dragon, which was the best beat em up. I love Battle Toads Double Dragon on the NES, like the combined crossover. That's really cool. But okay, what do I want to do? Let's go to floor one. I think this is where I want to go. Let's go around here. How do you get back to the train station? This is what I thought. So we go in here. Let's take the train station to Witchy World. It's been a while since we've done that. Oh, look at this. You don't even have to climb the ladder in this station. It's nice and level for you. Because just to confirm, I think in our totals, that should be 8 out of 10 jiggies. And we got everything else. But look at that. We spent like three hours in that one level, but it was good. I'm really happy to have finally beat uh, Grunty Industries again. With like a little asterisk there. But witchy world it is. Double Dragons Battletoads crossover on the Genesis, right? Yeah, even like the original Battletoads was on the Genesis as well. There you go, we took a big detour back to level 3 because even though we now have all of the Jiggies and such in this level, you may remember there is something that you get here that we never really had much use for, but now with the Claw Clamber Boots we can finally, finally wrap up something which we encountered way back. And you will see that in just one second. Should we do one more Grunty's Furnace Fun thing? For the road. See how good our luck is today. Where is that tent? Relative to where we currently are. If the camera would ever focus. But here we go. Let's get some food. I knew he would say that. I noticed um, when I went to a theme park last summer in my area. Whenever you'd say thank you, the employees would always say, my, uh, my pleasure. They'd never say you're welcome. It was always my pleasure. So there must have been something in the training that said, like, you have to say my pleasure and not thank you. I just find that really curious, right? Like, what's the, what's the particular reason for that? What's wrong with your welcome? Why my pleasure? Is there like some kind of, you know, response hierarchy I have never heard of in that regard? That where my pleasure is like higher than your welcome? Maybe we have some theme park, ex-theme park employees in the chat who can clear that one up. But I just found that fascinating that like they all said my pleasure. And like I never ever hear anyone say that outside of that one day where it was like 100% my pleasure rate. Double Dragon Battletoads. Yeah. You only play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be, Ma KCC? I've said probably like Mega Man Battle Network 3 before. It's just so good. With so much replayability and an awesome post game and just so much to collect. I mean, but but technically, technically, I guess the Battle Network collection is like a single cartridge, right? So if I could pick that, that's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of content right there. And by the time you've played like all six of them, and then all the different versions of all six of them, you know, you got all the other versions to play. Uh, so, so yeah, the Battle Network Legacy Collection is pro would probably be the only cartridge I would ever need to, to live a long, happy life. But obviously I don't want that, I want to play lots of different things. But I love my Mega Man Battle Network. So, where do we get these boots to go up that wall? So that's why we're, that's why we're back here doing this, we couldn't do it before, because we didn't have the required upgrade. Like, I don't, uh, is it on the roof here? No. Is it over there? No. Is it, it's not on the roof over there, is it? Like, there's the, the claw climber boots. Oh, they're on top of the tent, I think. That's where they are. Oh, yeah, Wayoshi. There you go. Exactly, exactly. GG.
You only accept the first two. Or else they get, uh... This is the English man. What was that? Uh, you're welcome, no problem, says, uh, says True Seed. Those are two very good responses as well. Okay, let's get up the rope here, very carefully. Xbox 360 controller style. Here we go, here we go. That was just silly. I thought I was close enough I could make like a nice jump to the top, but it was not the case. This is not supposed to be hard. Let's line that camera up right behind us. There we go. <laughs> you would think that was like the hardest thing we've done all night. No, it wasn't. I didn't make it look that bad, did I? No, no, no. All right, before we have any more disasters, let's get up that wall. So here's the thing. Those guys are awful. Um, you can't take the, the fries and the hamburgers out of the level any other way. They all have no food signs that stop you from taking the food out, as we've seen previously. The only way you can get the food out is up this wall and through this door because there's no sign. They forgot to put a sign on this little hole here. And that leads us to where those cavemen are that we saw in the previous part. And we can now feed them the food. And once we do that, they'll be happy. Am I ready for transportation of polar bear cups? Age of Empire, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I love Roller Coaster Tycoon, but as a kid, I was gonna post this story a while ago, was I saw the, uh, like the Loopy Landscapes, I think it's called, Expansion Pass at, uh, at Value Village, and that reminded me of, as a kid, I played Roller Coaster Tycoon in the friend's house, and I really liked it. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to get it for myself. So I went to the store, and I, I wasn't much of a computer person. But I saw that they had Roller Coaster Tycoon, Loopy Landscapes. I'm like, yeah, that's gotta be it. I'm gonna buy that. And of course, it actually is the expansion pack that you need to have the original to, to use. But I, I didn't understand that. That was like a completely foreign concept to me back then. So I bought the expansion pa pack before I ever even had the original and still had to, to save up to get the original. But I still do have that, that the, the box I bought back then, the original Roller Coaster Tycoon big box. Big box PC games used to be awesome. But okay, here we go. Me love fast food, caveman. So here we get a reward for doing all that, and... I think we still have one Jiggy to get in this level that we will probably unlock. Why are teeth marks on it? <laughs> Thought it was chocolate was inside. For cavemen, they sure have an understanding of like the modern age. But let's go grab that. I like how uh, Jiggies kind of light up the area around them. But as we pick that up, you'll see that kind of disappear. But okay, what are we looking at for stats in Pterodactyl Land now? Like, one more that we get at a later point. Um, that one again is, uh... That one's another one that we get at a later point. But otherwise, I think everything's looking pretty good. So I think that's probably where... We're gonna wrap this up for tonight. Did you return? Yeah, we already did that one, Super Tom Brother. We already did, uh, the Polar Bear Guys. So there you go. Next time it's going to be Hail Fire Peaks. Let's just get out of this level. <laughs> Let's not end in Pterodactyl Land. Which exit do we want to use? We came in through Witchy World. Ah, we'll get out of here. Pterodactyl Land style. But Grunty Industries is just so much fun. Is this back to... No, this isn't the super high one that I fell from that one time. That was like way up there somewhere. Probably over there. 
But yeah, back to this level again. You thought you'd seen the end of it, but not quite. But I love Current the Industries. I love factory levels. And, um... Rareware always knew how to make a good factory level. Whether it was like Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong 64 has a really good factory level. This has a good factory level. Rusty Bucket Bay and Clanker's Cavern are kind of like factory adjacent with all the, you know, the whole industry thing going on. But with that, I think that's where we're going to wrap up tonight's part of Banjo-Tooie. I know it wasn't as long as some of the other ones, but <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think we're in any uh, position to start another level at this point. Or else we will be going all night. Not the original Big Box Roller Coaster Tycoon as a gift in 5th grade for your birthday, but you refused to play it for weeks because you didn't know how to play, but one day you sat down and figured it out, right? Computer games! It's like, how do you even put this disc in and like, you install it? And the original computer I played it on was my grandparents' computer, uh, and they had like Windows Millennium Edition, so that thing was always crashing, and I always thought maybe it was my fault, but I was relieved years later to find out that it was just a, a buggy mess overall. You have Theme Park on the Jaguar. Theme Park is on the Jaguar? That's actually fascinating. I'll have to look into that. But any last words regarding Banjo-Tooie tonight? How'd everyone like Grunty Industries? That was pretty fun. Windows 95 and 98. Ah, good times, good times. But thanks everyone for joining. Let me just see here. Let's do our overall totals one last time. There's 62 jiggies. Like, uh, we're doing really well. 15 hours, though, is pretty good. But with that, everyone, thanks for joining. Hope you have an excellent night. And again, keep an eye out for in the near future, we'll be playing Snake Rattle and Roll again. I know we're going to get it next time. Fingers crossed. But yeah, thanks for joining for Grunty Industries. Have a good one, everyone. Take care.